Oh yeah, that's a miniature building authority. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, sold his I'm, I'm a visual. I'm a terrain mini D and D DM style. I like that stuff. I would have liked to gotten into that. Uh, my problem, I would have liked to have done about everything. <laughs> yeah, you were telling and me so that. I, yeah. It's, it's I fun. decided I just narrow it down to one thing, and it's art. Yeah. I had a lot of friends that like jack of all trades, what, what they were saying, jack of all trades and master of none. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I was like a jack of all, well, I liked everything fun. I wanted to, when I was in my 30s, before I went to work at TSR, um, I was going to get a kayak, I was going to do whitewater stuff, I was um, doing, I had an old hot rod, um, there's everything going on. My wife just sort of set me down and said, <laughs> you're going to help me around the house and do dishes and everything else. <laughs> and instead of all that crap you're, you're having fun with, said, you're going to limit it down to one thing. And I said, okay, art, art. <laughs> so, yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. So, so I concentrate on the art. But I still, I still have a couple of hot rods over the years. I, I, yeah. I love cars. I love, I can't build them. I love driving them. Yeah. And, uh, and I like, we all have to have a couple of hobbies. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like speed and power. It's that adrenaline rush. Absolutely. I, I used to be that way, but I've, I've calmed down now. So, so yeah, I, I, flew, I've, oh, I have flew planes. So. Yeah, I, I was crazy speed crazy when I was younger, um, too. Yeah. Well, I've got, a, I've got a car right now. It's, um, it's a th 1934 Ford Coupe. Oh. And it's running 660 horsepower. That's there awesome. You go. And it weighs about 2,000 pounds. That's yep. a normal car I weigh three oh. to four. So yep. it is scary fast, but it's mm -hmm. fun. It's does, it fun. Like this, does it look like look like CT Top's car at all? Is it close? Or? Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I used to have a, yeah, I used to have a motorcycle with almost 200 horsepower in it. And, and it was, yeah, That's it was awesome. Crazy. Yep. I rode bikes. I just sold my last Harley. It was a really neat one. It was uh, mm -hmm. had a fat back car on it, Springer front end, biggest SNS motor they made. And um, the last time I drove it was a couple years ago. What year was so, it? Eighties. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, it was started out as an eighties Harley, but it had been really altered. Um, you couldn't tell what year it was. It was just a bike of its own. Really cool bike. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And the last time I rode it, a couple years ago, I nearly got run off the road twice by idiots. And uh, I thought, man, I'm getting too old to get hurt. <laughs> Seriously. So I sold it. Yep. I hate selling it, but I sold it. Yep. So, I... it was, and drivers get crazy anymore, you know. And, and, uh, you can't afford, especially my age, you can't afford to go down on the house. If you go down, you're going to have seriously injured. Yep. I won't heal so easy like I used to. <laughs> no, that's that's the thing. You you, you realize you're mortal somewhere in your forties. Exactly. That exactly. most most of us do. Yeah. I didn't realize it till I was about seventy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mid my mid forties, I started to slow yeah. down and realize that that I I broken some bones and and done some dumb stuff that was younger, and I realized yeah. that I'm not I might not survive the next one, so I I you're right. stop. I drove yeah. I drove trail bikes for years. Uh, real hard, rough trails, hill yep. climbing. I had a dirt, big dirt bike. Yeah, you can fall on a trail. Oh yeah, I broken ribs hurt. and yeah. arms and 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 also stuff Some like that. I done broke ribs. Yeah, twisted ankle a couple of times. Yep, and got so sore I couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, and uh, but uh, then I finally around here in a rural area used to we had all kinds of places to ride. Now they yep. start. Uh, fence it all off more so you can't do a lot you have to ride on trails yeah, yeah. i like that we like to r make our own trails back then it was real rough riding but i like trail bike riding and i finally just got in a street bike yeah uh, i have a mountain e bike now so so that, that that's about 20 miles an hour that's that's good for me now it feels fast <laughs> 20 miles an hour well, now. when you're running on trail you run 50 yeah well I, I, most, I mostly you do big like gravel yeah. roads and stuff like that around right. here up in the hills and stuff. And if, if you go down, you're not going to hurt yourself.
We had studs. We had, I had winter tires with studs on them. They were, but they were nasty to to ride on ice because you got so much traction. Yeah. that it was actually in some ways more dangerous uh, than asphalt yeah. because you had so much traction and all of a sudden you uh, lost it and then you just but the good thing is there were hardly anything hard to hit because yeah, there were just snow drifts and stuff so so, so that, that was when you go really went really fast with dirt bikes yeah we didn't have snow at that time but it froze over mm -hmm. yep yep we up in sweet and man, you just start to turn a little bit, and bam, you're down. Yep. You mm -hmm. Yeah, in Sweden, we, we had we had special tracks in up yeah. in, in the winter on on the lakes where people drove yeah. cars, and, and and I had a, a Yamaha 500 cc dirt bike, and yeah. and we went like crazy with it, and yeah, so you it was good times then too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun, and and yeah, and we flew gliders up in the winter up in the in the mountains that I way too. Wanted, I wanted to do that too. Yep, uh, that was. I was, uh, I was getting ready to buy a kayak. I was wanting to do some mm -hmm. kayaking. Is so much fun. You hype trained us, Jose. Yeah. Yep. I'm talking to the audience here, Larry. I'm sorry. They already got us a hype train before you even lie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're getting back in. Oh, it's, it's that's awesome a good thing. With adventures like that's that. That's a real good it's, thing. Yeah. So um, keep on, you guys. Uh, people love these this uh, random discussion. <laughs> trust me. Yeah. Keep it rolling there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, we had. I'm almost <laughs> almost good to go. Oh, you're still good to go. Okay. But no, like I said, I've I've liked uh, I would only like the adrenaline rushes. Mm -hmm. I love. Um, yeah. Uh, risking. I don't know. It's like roller coaster stuff. I don't like them. They don't bother me. I no, mean, I roller coasters are some of the most fun stuff. I I, I know. I it's... don't I don't like them that much because. They're safe. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, but I like the adrenaline rush in them. I, I especially like the modern steel ones because they shake less. They, they oh, go yeah, more straight, true. so to speak. Yeah, each of death. I yeah, heard the, the, the old wooden ones. They they go like you said, like this, yeah. and and that. that my mom's used to airplanes. When, when things start shaking, it means that you push it too hard. So 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 that means that that's why I probably like the steel ones that go fast and gives you a lot of G's. And I like to sit in the front, not in the back, because I want to I want to go fast and I want to see where I'm going, so to speak. So. With me, it's like, uh, I don't like them as much because they're made to be safe, because yeah. they can't afford people dying on these things. No, that's but isn't that the general thing? When you fly and stuff, you kind of want to come down, yeah. and when you take a motorcycle, I well, kind the of... Well, motorcycle, it's up to you. If you that's true, it, yeah. For it. It's not... Mm -hmm. It's got safety features like clutch, yeah. brakes. But it's yeah. but if you if you screw up, you, you will end up in the statistics oh, yeah. of yeah. yeah. When your when your life is on the line, mm -hmm. it's a lot more real. Yeah. Adrenaline rush is like that, I guess that's yeah. That's why I love airplanes too. Meaning yeah. if you screw up, then you were a hole in the ground somewhere. So yeah. yeah. So you had to to kind of shape up yeah. and, and and do fun things. I was, I was never on planes enough to experience them, but I'm I gotta feel like I gotta experience them. These single pilot planes like that, I'd probably love that too. Oh yeah, Gli gliders were some of the most fun we'd be. I had to grab my tube. Yeah, they, they were so much fun because you could do so much aerobatics, and it was you and the elements, and it was and up to quiet too. Yeah, exactly, was, very very quiet. Mike, like a a good car. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mike, yeah. say hello to Mr. L Larry Elmore. Hey, Hi, Larry. Hi. How's it going? <clears throat> going good. Good to see you. You. About how many people are we going to be talking to tonight? About a hundred or so, I well, think. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I average about a hundred viewers now. I'm a, a yeah. big Twitch partner. It six might be weeks a bit ago. more. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It might be a bit more. Nice yeah. crowd. It'd be a nice crowd. So, Steve-O's Gaming Dungeon. Let me give you a couple discords here. Uh, um, here's Cannon Fires, and here's the Virtual Crowd Con, uh, which both get used regularly. All right, go for it. Thank you for that interest there. As we, so, welcome everyone. We're going to start a couple minutes early. You're like four or five minutes early tonight. Uh, we got, we got uh, Larry on a little early, so let's, let's roll with it. Well, let's rock and roll here. And uh, got some, uh, nice, some nice uh, artwork up and uh, true legend uh, to the uh, gaming uh, industry when it comes to uh, artwork. Just, here comes Blue Box reading this too. So, thank you so very much there. Uh, Rob and uh, Evelyn, I know John is uh, away on work, so the other channel just rated into us and basically doubled our audience there, so there you go. Well, I've got something weird on my screen, I can see all the I've got. You see an 
entry screen up there with all of your uh, your picture. Oh, yeah, we'll be on in a second. Yeah, we're gonna be on one second here. Just give me the. Yep. I've lost you guys. Yeah, it'll be a second. It'll be, yeah, yeah, it'll absolutely. Be a second. That's the main yeah. screen. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. one wants to look at me in it. Exactly. You, 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 you That's not true. As soon as you, true. Jay opens the show, then, then yes. we will see each other again. Yes. Right. Uh, I'm going to yeah. do it right now. Here we go. No, oh, you're good. You're good. So, good evening, go. everyone. Early start tonight. So, um, I'm Jay Kaylor Gazumba, and with me always is my partners in crime, Anna Meyer and Greyhawk Mike Bridges. Hello. And what an yeah. honor tonight. To have, um, I mean, the most iconic, uh, known, well-known uh, artist when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons and other game systems uh, in the last forty years, I'd say, Mr. Larry Elmore. Larry, thank you so very much for coming on tonight. Really exciting. Very honored. Cannot wait to just delve into uh, <laughs> and, and into your whole history. I know we talked a lot on the phone, and we're, you guys were all talking beforehand. All the things you'd would have loved to do with it, and it's done. <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm glad to hear you got a nice hot rod there. Uh, you said it's a 34? Oh, yeah. 30, yeah. Um, 34.4. That's wow. wonderful. And can you guys, I can't see you guys right now. Oh, oh you can't? Then no. you have to, then you minimize uh, us or something. See if can you, you can. see me? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can see mm -hmm. you. So see if you can. Uh, All right, go in the upper right hand corner around. and go back to gallery view. You can just yeah. put in gallery view. Up and zoom, upper right hand corner view gallery. So. Uh, Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then you should be able to see all the pictures, all the screens. I don't. Uh... We're here. Oh, yeah. What What's do you see now? Uh, I'm, it says it's a, it's an ad like for Zoom. It says Zoom meeting is. Oh, then you have the, the 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 it's the you don't have the the Zoom window. You have the window where you when you start calls and stuff. So see if you can minimize oh, no, that no. and and yeah. then <laughs> go find back to the other yeah, window. Yeah. Go, yeah. There's it's another. one of the other we'll windows. Give us, give us all a yeah. second here. We're on early, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah, because Zoom has two windows. You have one yeah. window where you organize the calls and one window where so you, you see You probably want to go to – what do so you think, it's, Anna? it's down there down there by the window. So go around and see which windows you have and then At the bottom? find us. Yeah, it depends on. Oh yeah, you, that one's yeah. behind it, right? That that window's behind yeah, it. Yeah, so Zoom, has, window Zoom client that, has two windows. Yeah. you have a white window where you set up the calls and you choose. Go to the bottom stuff. bar, and there should be a blue like um. Sh there should be a blue like camera, a blue movie camera, and that, well, yeah, you you you, you can click you, on that. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, there's two there windows. You go. Just blue blue camera. Blue. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so thank you so very much, and I'm glad to now you can see us all. And uh, um, this is an exciting, exciting discussion. Uh, as we, you know, we're trying to really this year, we want to welcome in a lot of the um, uh, uh, the artists to the community uh, discussion. And uh, and uh, Larry, you're like uh, we had Darlene on at the end of last year. Uh, I'm so happy that you've uh, decided to come on. We have a giveaway going, by the way, everyone. Um, so I. I I put throughout two two really cool modules, Durgan's Folly and the Crucible of Freya. Uh, put them in. Maybe we'll add a couple other things. Hit exclamation point drawing. They're reprints, but they're really cool. Um, Necromancer Games third edition stuff, but you know yes. you can adapt it to any edition. They're really all neat. Yeah, and they're great covers too. All around, you're absolutely correct on that. So, um, wow, where do we start here? So, Larry, why don't you just Tell everyone, like, yeah. how how did you – you said one thing. Uh, like, tell us that story again about the jack-of-all-trades and how that happened. It sounds really interesting as far as how you got into art. Well, I got into art. I think – I only realized the last few years ago um, that I have a good visual memory. I didn't know that. I mean, I thought everybody did. Um, word memory, um, no. Uh, quotes, I can't remember a lot of quotes. Names. Names is horrible. I've met a lot of people I can't remember. I got to be around somebody quite a while before I remember their names. And uh, I just, I was, I think what made me realize I had a good visual memory was my mom, she's right now, she's 92, be 93 next month. And we had to move her to like a, a assisted living. So we was going through the house, my sister and, and I and my wife packing everything up. And I found a poster I did. It was like, um, uh, I was back in the 60s, I guess when it was like, keep America clean and everything. 
There's a poster for safety and clean. And I, there in that poster, I was about 10 years old when I drew this. It was a 1959 or 57 Ford um, convertible. It's when the first year they come out with a trunk opened up and a hard top went into the trunk and closed. And I recognize it as being a, that I think it's a 59, a 59 Ford convertible. And I thought I was like 10 years old or 11 when I drew that. And it was, all the details was there and everything. And I didn't have one to look at. I mean, nobody I knew had one. And uh, and there was other things I was looking at. Like, how did I know to, to draw that? I mean, I was remembering what things looked like. And I remember when I was a kid, I would, you know, I spent a lot of time in the woods and I would walk up to trees real close and look at the bark patterns. And, and I started seeing patterns in nature, repeating random patterns. And um, I didn't know that, but it was how things were made. And uh, so I could easily, I could do you a painting of a summer scene in the middle of winter or do you a winter scene in the middle of summer because I could remember the snow, the colors and everything. But uh, but I, as far as my childhood, I'm from Kentucky. I'm a Southerner. I, my family on both sides and even my wife's family, but mainly on my family, has been living in Kentucky in this county before Kentucky became a state. Wow. It was uh, some of the long hunters that came in. And so this area is home, home, home to me. You know, it's it's a uh, so that's why I moved back here. And I feel um, that. And uh, and and I grew up playing in the woods, climbing cliffs with no ropes, just climb them. <laughs> I've stuck on the side of cliffs before, and uh, you know, being twelve or thirteen by myself, and it's like I'm going to die, and you start crying, and you're still stuck. You don't have no ropes. You just free climb. No nothing. Just your tennis shoes and your fingernails, and and like you stay there till you're getting tired. You're gonna to to collapse, and you realize that nobody's gonna come and save you. You've got yourself in this mess, and you got to get out. Oh. And so I would survive. I'd figure out a way to, to get out of the mess. But I think all that taught me. Yeah, you know, I live close to nature. I love nature, and I always. When me and other kids my age, I'd always want to play like we were pioneers or we were, you know, swords and sword fighting and stuff. And and we'd use about everything to sword fight with and busted knuckles and everything, you know. We'd usually play till somebody almost needed a stitch or something, got, got hit pretty good. <laughs> and, but that was life. It was fun and exciting. And then, uh, like we were talking about earlier, adrenaline rushes. I loved the adrenaline rush. And uh, and I got into, I started loving old car speed and actual power of horsepower. Hot rods. I grew up in a big hot rod generation and uh, never could afford one <laughs> until later on in life. And I'd I slowly built my way up. I'd get an old car and fix it up some, then sell it and get another one. And finally, I've got a couple of pretty neat hot rods. And uh, but I love the the horsepower, the rush of that, and uh, and that's I guess if a hobby, that's my hobby is you know doing something that sort of scares the crap out of you. But <laughs> but I I realized that I had to narrow things down to one thing when I was in college, and um, and uh, I was I was dating what. A girl that became my wife later on, and and um, I thought, man, if I marry her, I gotta get serious. I gotta make a living. And then when I was a senior in college, I realized that I saw a lot of art majors that graduated a couple of years before me, and they were working at McDonald's. And I'm like, God, I don't want to work at McDonald's. I gotta do. I gotta do this serious. And um, so I really knuckled down. And um, by the time I went to Western Kentucky University, just a regular state university, and um, when I was a senior, <laughs> when I first went to college, as a, I guess it was about my sophomore year, the first art class I took. I was in art class, and the instructor said, uh, I want everyone, I want to ask each one of you, who are your favorite artists? I didn't know any artists, really. Oh, you wow. know, uh, my high school, we didn't have art. It, it wasn't around. You know, in rules, counties, they didn't have So 
all these kids, a lot of them was from New York, New Jersey, they up north, they've been to galleries and everything. And and they were naming over artists I never heard of. And so it comes to me, he said, what's your favorite artist? I said, well, Norman Rockwell is one. And everybody sniggered because that time Norman Rockwell was nothing. He was a cheap commercial illustrator. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Right. She was dirt, you know. <laughs> and so I said, I like Norman Rockwell. And I had to come up with another one. Well, Frazetta had just come up with his first Conan cover. And it blew me away. Oh. And I said, and yeah. Frank Frazetta. Yeah. And said, who in the hell is Frank Frazetta? <laughs> I said, he did a cover of this book. It's fantastic. And he said, so you want to be a cheap commercial illustrator? And all the class laughed. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's what I want to be. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. you know, look at this. Now, Norman Rockwell's painting sells for millions. Frazetta sold a painting over a million. Yep. And so... Being a cheap commercial illustrator wasn't a bad job. Yeah. I bet you you probably had a better career than half the other students. <laughs> more like ninety percent. Or, or, or not, yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Yep. Wow. Well, I was going to be a teacher. I thought I teach teach in high school. Well, then my my instructor at college after I was there about two years, they they got me aside and they said, "We think you should do more than be a high school teacher." I said, "Well, like what? I want a job when I get out." And they said, "Well." Um, you need to get a, 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 a master's degree. Uh, and then what I did, well, where did I get a job? Well, you know, if you get a master's, you get a better job being an art director someplace. And I said, I don't be an art director. Mm -hmm. I want to do art. Yeah. And um, art. they said, well, you, you need to get a master's. So they, I mean, I was going to college on loans and grants and I'd work all summer to, to make enough to survive. I mean, I was living in, scuzzy old apartments off campus and me and the roaches getting along fine. <laughs> and um, then they said I could get a scholarship to Pratt, which was the school at that time. You got a master's from Pratt. Yeah. You were downtown. And I'm like, that sounds really great. At my senior show, and you had to have a senior show. And I had all these paintings. It was, I had barbarians. I had surrealism. I had <laughs> fantasy. And they're like, hey, nobody seen anything like it. And even by now, my teachers thought I was a bit crazy, but I was pretty good. <laughs> and and I went to every senior show, ever show that comes through that university for my four and a half years of college. And my senior show, it was so, there were so many people there constantly. It was packed, the halls, the gallery. And they even had to set up guards because other students had a guard because people were trying to steal some art. Wow. And I didn't know if this was good or bad. It's <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. And uh, and so I was almost failing French. I hated taking you know, foreign languages. I had to have so many hours. Well, I was always a little bit late for my French class because I would go all the way across campus and run. I just had, a, you know, like 10 minutes to get there and get seated. I was always like two minutes late. And I, and I wasn't doing good in French. And... Um, and uh, my teacher, he, he was a pretty, pretty good guy. He just sort of ignored me. I didn't score very well. And I, I was always sitting in the back. I, I weighed about 103 pounds. And I'm only, back then, I'm only like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, about the tallest I ever got. I'm a little guy. And uh, and so I just I just sweated out every day. I got to pass French. I, if I fail this, I can't I can't get, get my degree. Anyway... My senior show went up, so I went to my French class that Monday, and he, or was, or one of the days a week, and he said, okay, before I start my class, i got to tell you guys, everybody here, you must go over to the gallery in our department and look at the show that's there. It will blow your mind. It's 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 nothing like I've ever seen. It's, it's eye-opening. It's storytelling. I'm like, wait, I think he's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Like, and then I nice. oh, and I thought, no, I'm the only show over there. It's got to be me he's talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. oh God bless. And I, I thought, wait, wait, second thought. If he likes my art, maybe I can get a passing grade out of this. Because I was running about a, a D, <laughs> a low D, between uh -huh. an F and a D, you know. And uh, language is one of those things you can't BS your way through. You know, you got to know it or you don't know yeah. it. 
I could always BS my way through a lot of classes, you know. And um, so after the class is over, everybody left. I walked up to him. And I said, you know that? Uh, he just looked up at me and said, yeah, what do you need? What do you want? I said, uh, you know that art show you was talking about? He said, yeah, you should go see it. I'm like, well, um, that art that you're looking at and talking about? I said, I did it. <laughs> he, he looked at me. He's like, no. Nah. This sort of chicken was like, no, no. I said, no, I did it. I did that. I'm an art major. He said, you did that art? And I finally convinced him. And so I ended up getting a C out of the French class. Yeah. <laughs> there you Good go. Enough, man. That's a great awesome. story. It worked. Fantastic. It worked. It scared me to death, though, man. Yep. It made it. That's um, a great story. But, but then um, uh, here's the thing. When I had my senior show, um, I, I knew I was going to be drafted. I mean, Vietnam was going strong. And, yeah. and I would check. Back then, you had the local draft boards, and you can go and talk to the person Based that ran the draft board. Your birth date, yeah. And so I'd go and talk to, to the woman that, that, that ran the draft board. She's an older woman. She's pretty straightforward. She, it's like she didn't have a heart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see her. And I'm like, I was in my last year of school, and she said, okay, you can probably finish up this semester. But you are going. So I was finishing up in in December and uh, and so and I, I was ready I was done I got my degree she said but I'll tell you hun but you got there's gonna be a big draft in January and you're gonna be in it unless you fail a physical she said anything wrong with you I said not that I know of she's well you're gone in January so I knew that I wasn't going to Pratt after that so oh, wow. I got out in December I got drafted in January and um but luckily, I end up uh, stationed at Fort Knox doing art, and then I end up uh, in Germany with a combat engineering unit. But I was in headquarters company, and I did more art and you know Mickey Mouse things. And made it through. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even. I was. You know, by the time you get through basic training and everything, and and like I said, I always like the adrenaline rush. I was ready to go to Vietnam. That's like. I'm going to go to real war this time. It's not playing with sticks. Yeah, I'm going, and you're so fired up after basic training, like I got to kill something. Yeah, <laughs> and then after uh, I got stationed Fort Knox, and settled down. Like, oh, thank God I didn't go to Vietnam. I don't really want yeah. to. Yeah. And then I got married, and uh, then uh, then when I went to Germany, my wife went with me. So, and that was a great experience. It's like only thing I've ever done in my life is art. Yeah. yeah, that's about it. Uh, during college, yeah. I had a summer job working at a big, big printing company. They a printing factory where they did the printing, and so I got to understand how printing is done. Uh, all you full color, all the old time way, and really understand printing. And it really helped me as an illustrator to understand what printing, what they can do and what they can't do with black and white line work and continuous tone black and white and all that it was good education so my whole life has pointed me one direction is art yeah, yeah. i've been stupid to turn my back. <laughs> i couldn't do nothing else but go kill myself in a hot rod or something or a motorcycle or old motorcycles you years. do have some people in the military saying thank you for your service in chat well, so just uh, hear it. it did me a lot of good the service itself ex itself it made a man out of me it made me understand life differently. Uh, it was different in college, believe me. <laughs> and uh, I had great respect for it. And I go to conventions now. And over the last several years, 20 years or more, um, I can almost tell when, uh, you know, I have my booth set up my table and I'm talking to somebody. I can almost tell when I'm talking to ex-military or military. Yeah. Just the way yeah. that. They're, they're controlled. Um, they, they use sir and ma'am a lot. They, uh, there's something about them I can spot. And usually I'll say, uh, are you in the military or been in the military? And they'll go, yes. I haven't missed yet. <laughs> uh, nice. but see it. And they, they yeah. I, I, I appreciate the military. And, and, uh, and I'm glad I went. And uh, it was a great experience. And I really didn't need combat, even though I thought I did, but I didn't need it. <laughs> Well, they told me in basic because I was so little. They'd make I'd make a good tunnel rat. Oh, and nice. I, had, I had a friend that was a tunnel rat, and uh, he sent home, letters home to his brother. And his brother was in college at the time, and he would read me some of his letters. And 
God bless. And so my friend, he was never particularly right after that when he got home and everything. He was, I think his nerves got to him some way. He was a different person. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's understandable. Good. It really is yeah. understandable. Yeah. Wow. So, um, <laughs> so this is, um, I'm going to say the early seventies and you did your, your military service is done. You were in Germany. I the, was in the, in the, in the seventies. Yeah. I got out of the army in 73, I think. Okay. 72, 72, 72, yeah. 73. So I know I, I read on, uh, um, your biography, you, you joined TSR in 81, so you have eight years there between 73 yeah. and 81. Yeah. So what was well, the journey into fantasy? Yes, and, and, good well, question. Yeah. Well, I uh, I was already into fantasy in college, mm -hmm. and uh, and the teachers thought I was crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I like, once I saw Frazetta's cover, then I started looking Listen. for more stuff, and Jeff Jones was doing some covers. Well, I bought anything. I didn't even... Uh, well, I bought the first Frazetta cover, the Colin book, and I didn't even read it. I just sat in my little apartment. <laughs> and I just look at it, the cover, just like it just blew me away. And uh, the guy across the hall, I lived in an apartment building then, like an old house was divided up with college students. And the guy across the hall, he said, are you going to read that damn book? You've been looking at it for a week. <laughs> I, said, I hadn't even thought about reading it. I was fascinated with the cover. <laughs> He said, let me read it. Well, I made him swear almost in blood that he wouldn't damage that cover. I was going to tear the cover off. And oh, my gosh. Book. And he said, no, I promise I won't mess it up, okay? Just keep it together. So he read the book. He come back. He said, you like this cover? I go, oh, yeah. He said, read the book. <laughs> okay. So I sit down and read mm -hmm. the book. He said, it's really cool. So I read the book like, oh, man, that just blew me away. And, um, and then... Uh, then he brought, about two weeks later, he said, I found these, uh, this other book you got to read. I said, what? He said, well, it's sort of weird. He said, it's, it's not easy to read. It's sort of like Dickens or something. But he said, you got to read one book, and then you read three more books. And <laughs> That's I, where this is going. Yeah. And so he brought me the first book. <laughs> it was a Lord of the Rings series, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I read those, and that blew my mind even bigger. And so I thought, I want to know these fantasy people like in Conan and in, in Lord of the Rings. It's like, this seems like northern, central northern Europea is a setting. I want to know who lived in, in, in high school and even in college, unless you took special history courses. They only touch, you know, in high school, it's, it's American history up to a certain time and yep. then they get, you know, got two classes and skip that, maybe hit the Civil War, you get as far as the Civil War and that's it. Mm -hmm. that's it. So I thought, I wanna know who the people lived up there. Somebody had to live there. Hell, a Stonehenge was built. Somebody built that. <laughs> that's all I knew about history in yep. uh, Northern Europe. And so I started going to the library and trying to figure out who lived there. Well, I would find, I was good history books. I'd go there a lot at night, not studying for my classes. I was, you know, getting history books, going to the table and looking and, and they'd show maps sometimes and it would show, you know, they would show uh, Egypt, Rome, Greece, you know, all your central areas where civilization was. But then it'd show up in, in Europe, it'd be like battle axe cultures. They'd leave mm -hmm. the whole group. You know, Germany all the way into Norway, and my, you know. my old, old ancestry was was kind of written off as <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, oh, bo the boat tax people and and, and yeah. names like that because they didn't build yeah. big buildings and big cities, you know. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, who are these people? There's got to be a name. And I kept going through books, and finally I saw the word one time that said Celt. Yep. Ooh. Okay, I got a name. I got a name. This is when I was in college. And so this is in the 60s. And so I started trying to find anything. It wasn't much older. Couldn't find a books in the library about it. So after I got drafted and went to the Army and got back, uh, of some book club, it could have been a Playboy book club. I don't care who sent me a thing, join a book club. I don't think it's, it was a history book club. That's what it was, some history book club. Mm. And I looked at books. It was a book on Celts, a book on Vikings, a book on... All these people went, oh my God. So I ordered all the books, you know, and started reading them. And and then it 
ago, I started finding Celtic design work. I started seeing some images and, uh, and it's like, wow. And so that blew me away. So I started, okay, now that was in the, in 60s. Okay, I was in, in, in the army for two years. So 73, I was out and I was working back at Fort Knox now as a civilian. I was a GS seven and I made a GS nine which was a good living at the time. And I was doing army manuals, illustrating manuals and stuff because all the army manuals up to then was like designed for World War II type battles, battlefields with armor, mainly with armor. At that time, Fort Knox was the home of armor, tanks, helicopters, scout attack helicopters. And so they had to redesign all their books for jungle warfare, for different type of warfare. So they was to redoing all the German, I mean, all the German, all the, um, the training books for all this. And so it was a lot of illustrations So I worked there. And it was, it was fun. I was doing art. It, but at home, I'd come home and do fantasy paintings and fantasy drawings. And then we hired in some other guys and a couple of girls that were younger than me. And not by maybe four or five years the most. And they were getting into fantasy art, but there was no fantasy art out there, just a, a book. Every once in a while, some book cover would pop up. And then the Hillebrands did the first Lord of the Rings calendar. And that Ooh, blew me away. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's and an annual also, thing. Also, um, Daryl Sweet was doing a lot of stuff back then. I just get everything he did. And, um, and um, uh, some more... Uh, Bernie Wrights and I bought anything that he was doing. I, at Fort Knox, I had the ink. I had the ink. Everyone was doing the ink, all your drawings. And so I would study that. Uh, I would buy creepy area and Vampirella magazines and look <laughs> at the ink. Just look at the inking. And, um, and it wasn't long. I could. I was inking with a brush and without mistakes. I, I, it wow. took a few years. So I worked at Fort Knox. I really got to hone my skills on a lot of things. And while nice. I was there, I sent my portfolio. I had a portfolio some by then, and I'd done some big paintings, fantasy paintings at home. Sent it to Heavy Metal. Well, first of all, Ooh. oh, Heavy Metal Mag, oh, wow. National, National Lampoon, and they started publishing some of my stuff. This is in the around the mid '80s or '70s, I guess. So I was getting pretty regular gigs at, for National Lampoon. I thought, well, that that was the only magazine that time this before heavy metal that had any kind of a fantasy weird stuff in it and jeff jones had a strip in the back back called idol just mm. beautiful ink work i don't know if anybody remembers that i would mm. i would tear that out of the magazine and collect those pages and it's yeah and his it was all ink work beautiful beautiful ink work it's only like to that. one or two pages or three pages they did, do, I don't know if you can get it, but there was a big book on all the idol stuff put out. Uh, I bought one a few years ago. So I don't know how I got it. I think somebody saw it and told me about it, and they bought it for me and sent it to me. So Very cool. But, uh, but anyway, it's, so I was in that, and then I found out that National Lampoon owned heavy metal, and it was just <laughs> out about a year. So, so I just, I didn't know anybody... I had the address of National Lampoon. It was in the same building. So I took a painting, a small painting. Uh, I think it was done. It was done on canvas. I packed it up in a box, mailed it to Heavy Metal, you know, with the National Lampoon address on it. And um, I made the original. I didn't know how you send stuff off. I didn't, you know. <laughs> and so... Um, I got a call at work and they said, uh, we're going to use your painting for a back cover because it more tells a story. And so we want it on the back cover, not on the front. The front, we want to jump out and bite you, you know. And um, it was, their, I think, their first or second anniversary issue. I got the back cover. And the person on the front that got the front cover is this big face, like a robotic face. And they signed their name. I've been watching his pop-up stuff he's about like me just barely getting published so, and it looked like a it looked like a fish he was signing his name it was like a fish or something i didn't know what it was and he got the front cover i got the back and uh and they called me up and said 
uh, don't send original artwork anymore until we call for it. You don't <laughs> send in photos or a portfolio. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I didn't know. I found out years later, while I was with TSR, we hired a new guy in TSR and his name was Clyde Caldwell. And I didn't know him from, a, oh. from Adam until I saw him finish his first painting. He signed it with that little Oh, oh, oh you're he, that guy. He, he, <laughs> he got nice. the front cover. <laughs> he got the front cover. Nice. That's an uh, awesome story. This yeah. is this is Clyde Caldwell, right? Ravenloft cover? Yeah. The, the Ravenloft cover. That's Clyde, Clyde has all the big gems in his I part. think it's, yeah. yeah has I'm almost positive it's Clyde, right? I think it's Clyde. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cover of Ravenloft. I'm yeah. Almost, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Thank you. I know we did the first cover and just kept doing... He did a lot of raving well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, wow. All right. So you were bouncing around mm. between, uh, between uh, heavy metal and all, all sorts of things. And then how did the connection happen with Gary Gygax and TSR? Okay. Well, I had a couple of things. Sure. Uh, I was working at, I was working at Fort Knox and, and there was about, our art department consists of about, probably about 13 artists and all pretty young. I'll out of college. I've been hired. Uh, they were hired after Vietnam because they wanted to read, they had to expand the shop and do more illustrations. And so we were all sort of into fantasy by now. You know, the younger people liked it. And um, then we hired this. We hired another guy and a new guy, and he had long, like hippie hair, and this little scraggly beard. He looked just like Charles Manson. Oh, and, no. uh, and so. I would, I would tease him, call him Manson. And what happened is every lunch, we got about an hour for lunch. These high school kids, he was only about 22 years old. And these high school kids would come over and get around his desk and they were playing a game, some weird game. <laughs> and I got to look in the game. It was D&D. &D. He was yeah. playing the first edition huh. or somewhere in there. And, uh, and I'd heard of it by the way I was playing. And so we started teasing him, calling Charles Manson and his family, you know. And every once in a while, he would, he'd get his hair all down. He would take a little mark and put a swastika in the middle of his forehead. Oh, no. He'd clear his throat real loud, so we'd look around. He looked just like Manson. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good guy, though. He was a really good guy. Well, and, those uh, were the days when you could do that stuff and get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those but, were the uh, days. But anyway, he said, I bet they would like your art. Because I looked at their art then, and it was, you know, it wasn't very professional looking, you know. And um, he said, "I'm going to send my portfolio into to, to Dungeons and Dragons and see if they hire me as an artist." That's what he, Vernon was saying. That's it. Uh, and uh, he said, when he got all of his stuff together in a letter, he said, "Why don't you send some samples of your stuff with it?" I said, "I don't know." Uh, I, they, it looks like they like this certain kind of look, and I'm more of a painter, and 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 I don't know if they'd like my work. And he said, "Yeah, I think they would." And so I had a bunch of, uh, well, I work, where I worked, you could get copies made really easy of black and white work. So I had a lot of line work, and then I had some pictures of, I had photos I'd take, or slides I'd taken of paintings. Back then, you, your portfolio was a set of slides you know, 35 millimeter slides in a little case. That was your portfolio. And the art directors, they just got your slide out and held up the light and looked at it. Like, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks, that's about it. And so I sent some stuff along. And about a week later, she got a call at work because I think Vernon left the work number and they wanted to talk to me. And so they said, uh, uh, would awesome. you like to do a freelance piece for us? And I go, yeah. And it was an old 73 or something calendar cover somewhere. And it was, um, it was, uh, I was excited, you know, and, but I had a real short deadline. <laughs> and I, you know, this is my first really serious deadline, you know. And um, so, man, I whipped this thing out. And I look at it now. I don't know why they published it. It was pretty bad, but they <laughs> liked it. And uh, and they put it on the cover of the calendar. And um, then about a little bit after that, and they they supposed to pay me in forty five days. Well, they didn't pay me. <laughs> and um, 
a month will goes by, two months go by, and then by now they're calling me, wanting to hire me. <laughs> and I was in GS9, and this is in 1981, probably 1980, 81. I was making about 20,000 a year. And that was good money then. Yeah. That's equivalent to like $80,000 today or 90. And um, so I was, and I just bought a new house and we had two kids, one of them in the first grade. And, and, uh, and so they they want us to move to Wisconsin. I'm like, well, God, this is a bad time to be moved. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty settled where I'm at and getting some freelance work. Well, then they wanted to fly me up there. So I flew up there. Well, TSR wasn't in one building. They were scattered in two or three buildings. And everybody there was like, kids, you know, I was 31 or something. They were in their 20s or some of them in their teens. The only person that was close to my age was some of the, the presidents of, or the, 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 or the boss of certain sections, you know, like a, a writing. And I think Will Niebling or somebody was in charge of something. He was about my age or about a year or two older. Gary was a few years older than me, but everybody was kids. And uh, so we went home. My wife talked about it, my wife and I, and I said, man, I don't know if I want to risk my future with a bunch of kids. And I know this game is good and it's popular, but I'm making good money. And they had already told me at Fort Knox, they were grooming me to be the head of training aides, which was a GS 11 or 12 slot which was big money. And um, and so, so that was a hard decision. So we decided, um, uh, oh, they didn't pay me with that one cover. Still hadn't paid me. So I, did a, <laughs> That's I, did a, I did a cartoon of uh, this little character. He was like the forerunner of Snarf from Snarf Quest. Mm -hmm. strip. Okay. Look, little character and a cute sexy girl i did an ink drawing as a letter to him and i'm starting out like i did this like the character was doing a quest for 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 somebody i forgot exactly how it was it's only about four pages a comic strip four full pages and uh i mean it wasn't that big i don't know i, I worked inked it all up and it, it came to at the end the last panel on this thing was the same thing as a cover of the dragon of the mag of the calendar that I painted, except the main character wasn't a warrior; it was my little snarf character, you know. And they had the girl there, and had a dragon there, it was everything. And I said, "And he's still not gotten any treasure." <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn! Well, it was about a about a week or two later, I got paid, and, uh, <laughs> and so Sorry. that and that was before I went to TSR. Yeah, I mean, they do the tour. Anyway, after I got back, they'd phone my wife and after we got back home and we decided uh, I'll just stay here, not do that. And um, so I told them no. And um, uh -oh. then about three or four weeks later, I got a phone call at work again. It was from somebody's secretary at TSR. And she said, look, the president of our company is going to fly down and talk to you. Would you pick him up at Louisville Airport and take him back? I said, sure. And so it was Kevin Bloom. Um, oh, well, Bloom's. Yeah, he was president at that time. They would rotate. Gary and the Bloom brothers would rotate who was president. And um, so he flew down, and I picked him up, took him down to my house. We're Southerners. We fed him supper, not dinner. Dinner is what you eat at noon. You know, <laughs> supper is what you eat at night. They didn't make supper bells. They made dinner bells. That was to call people in for dinner. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we fed him supper, and as a good Southerner, after we ate, my wife got some cake and coffee and sat there and we had the kids go up and play in the back room so we could talk business. And um, before he, he took a sip of coffee and he just leaned back and he said, all right. He said, what do you make at TSR? I said, what do you mean? My salary? He said, yeah, what's your salary? I said, I'm making 20000 a year. He said, we'll double it. I'm like, she, what? I said, my wife works. <laughs> <laughs> my wife worked at City Hall here in the little town, like Mayberry. And she made about 12000 here. He said, we'll double that. And I looked at her and she looked at me. We're looking $64,000 in 1981. And it's like, that'd be like, almost like 100000 today. So you said, Jeez. we're going to Sizzler. 
Well, I said, we just bought this house. All I do is this house. He said, don't worry about it. We'll either buy it and sell it for you or we'll put it on the market. We'll take care of it. He said, she said uh, and we'll have a house for you to move into, rented for you in Wisconsin. I'm that's like, all, wow, that's great. This is Jeez. crazy. They want me too much. It sort of scared me, you know. Yeah, I'm too good to be scared. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what? Is good? Oh so I looked gosh. at my wife. I mean, you know, the satanic panic was always already starting a little bit, you know. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, now here they are. Going to... Why do they want me so bad for? You know, I mean, what's going on? That's a lot of money. And, and I, you know, uh, I've done some pretty good paintings. Um, the ones I'd shown in my portfolio, the painting I did for them wasn't that good. But I'd had big oil paintings of fantasy stuff, and they liked it. So I look at my wife, and she gave me that sort of that look and a nod. And I turned around and looked at myself. I said, I think you just bought yourself an artist. And so within, uh, it took them two months to, to get me a place and everything and moved us up there. And, and my wife, she was, she was a really good secretary, typist, bookkeeper, all this kind of stuff. And so they gave her a job as well. Gave me a job and, um, and the rest was history. I just started and, and, and um, so do you think you were the highest paid employee uh, there at that time? <laughs> you probably... yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was one of the higher paid ones. Wow. That's awesome. Well, okay, now Jeff Easley. Uh, let's talk about Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. Jeff is a Kentucky boy, too. And while I was at Fort Knox, a friend of Jeff went to college with him. Jeff went to college in Kentucky at Murray <laughs> State University. So it's just farther west than where I went to school. And so, so Jeff had come to visit his friend, and his friend worked at Fort Knox as an illustrator. And so I met Jeff, and we talked, and I saw his portfolio. It looked really good, and he was married then. He'd gotten out of college, he's married, and had a little boy. And they were going to move to New York, and you're going to try to make it as a freelancer. And I said, man, you know, that takes some courage. You know, you're married, you got a little baby, and you're going to go to New York and live there and, and try to live freelancing. I don't think Jeff really knew what he's getting into. And um, so he did. And I, I like Jeff. He's quiet, but he's really funny when you get to know him because he's very quiet if you just doesn't know him. And um, so when I got hired at TSR, uh, the people I worked at Fort Knox knew all about it, of course. And so Jeff's friend that went to school with him, he worked at Fort Knox. So he calls me up and he said, uh, uh, I said, now what? I forgot that. Exact. He, that's how I met Jeff. Through him. Now I'd give Jeff my phone number. So when I was at TSR, Jeff called me. He said, uh, are you working at that Dungeon and Dragon place? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, how are you doing? He said, bad. You know, he said, I'm making a living working in a popcorn factory. And he says, not popping popcorn. It's carrying 100-pound bags of popcorn and stacking. Wow. And he said, I'm, I can't get much freelance work. He said, it's, it's a nightmare. And, you know, his wife was working. And they had to pay a babysitter. It's just a mess. Hey, little boy. And I said, TSR will hire you. And I said, send, you know, I'll tell him about you. I said, send my portfolio. I gave him the address and everything. And he said, well... Uh, I said, and if they want to hire you, I said, ask if they ask your salary, ask for forty thousand a year. He said, Oh my God, I can't <laughs> ask for that. I said, No, that's what they're paying me. They're crazy. I said, no. <laughs> I said ask for forty thousand. He said, How can you do that? You know. <sighs> and so they flew Jeff down. I didn't get to see him. They flew him in. He met everybody and um, talked to him. Flew him back. All in like. One day, he spent a night in a hotel oh. in New York. And then Joe, Jim Rosloff was the boss, the head of the art department. He came over and talked to me. He said, well, we looked at your buddy's stuff. He says, he's got some really good art. We, we'd like to hire him. I said, well, that's good. He's a really good guy. And, and, uh, and he'll work hard for you. And he's real fast. And they said, well, we, we asked him about what he wanted as a salary. And he, he said about... Um, I think he said 10000 a year or eight. I don't know, something like that. Really low. And I'm like, oh, God, Jim. 
<laughs> said, but we we told him we'll pay him seventeen thousand, and then if if he works out, we'll we'll give him a bigger raise. So I, I don't know if I called Jeff then or waited until he got there. I was like, I told you that's for forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> they got more money than they got sense, you know. Oh my gosh! Wow. And, um, but they and and about three months he was raised. They liked his work. He was fast oh, yeah. and, and, uh, and doing good work. Great pen and ink as well. He could do color a pen and ink. You're putting together an, a superstar cast of artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, his Earl Otis was already there, right? Earl Otis was already doing work. No, they had. I didn't get to meet him. They were, when I got there, they had just left. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. The death had settled. Second. They got some kind of dispute. Okay. Oh. With TSR, was, I never didn't know exactly what it was. And they had threatened to quit if TSR didn't meet their demands. Well, TSR didn't. So I was okay. all the department quit. And I never didn't know for sure what it was about. Okay. I, and I felt really bad when it, I got hired. And I, the guys were, um, I'm like, did, did they fire us? Fire them just to get us? What's the deal? I felt really bad. And I was always afraid to meet any of the other artists. Okay. Uh, afraid that they had a grudge, might just walk up and punch you out or something. I didn't know. And then finally, years later, I found out that it wasn't it wasn't us, me and Jeff and Clyde and stuff. It wasn't us. And um, and I, I finally got to meet a lot of the artists back then, and I really like them. They're really good guys. And uh, uh, so it's it's all like a to me. It was just been like. A, a fairy story, uh, yeah. Fairy tale. But it was hard work, hard work. And when I worked there, I worked day and night. I mean, not I worked for them all day and into the night, and I would work on my own stuff. For 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 all the time I worked there, I was averaging about four to five hours sleep a night, mm. day and night. And, uh, and then when I, I could see the writing on the wall that TSR was going to either get sold or go under because they kept hiring people that knew nothing about gaming, hiring, hiring higher up people. And, and they knew, I know I'm, I was at my desk and Keith Bloom comes walking by and he had this guy, he's a little bit older than me. Well, I, I was in my, I guess, I wasn't even 40 yet. I was, and uh, he was probably about 45. And he introduced me to, he's going to be a new guy, head of, um, oh, what is it? Of the creative, uh, head of like development. I forgot his exact title. Uh, it's an EVP position. Um, like, like the direction the company's going to go in, like he was head of this. And so Kevin had to leave, and the guy was standing there. And I was painting and talking to him. And uh, I said, have you um, ever played d and No, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Chicago. And I said, well, what was you the, the marketing? He's head of our marketing. That's what it was. I said, what was you marketing in Chicago? He said, refrigerators. I said, refrigerators? It was something like that, some appliance. I, I almost wow. bought my refrigerator. And I said, well, have you ever played d and He said, no. I said, have you ever planned on playing D and D? He goes, no. I said, so you're gonna be head of marketing, huh? <laughs> and he's gonna get a hundred thousand a year. And uh, and this more of this crap was happening, and, and we was getting in more financial trouble. Yeah. And they wasn't doing anything to solve it. And then some of the these marketing people and staff that never played D and D decided fantasy gaming was over with. I mean, the, the creative people could see fantasy. Gaming was just starting. Yeah. Fantasy was finally now hitting. You, If you had an ounce of sense or if you could follow society, the feel of society, which artists and writers and great people can, they feel it in their bones. You knew it was at the beginning of fantasy. You could feel it. And here are the older people like, it's, it's going to be over. It's done. And they started doing crazy board games. They was doing them getting people out uh, of companies in Chicago doing all the artwork because I guess they're afraid to do it in-house because we would have rebelled. We'd have had a walkout or something. And uh, here's these new games coming out, these stupid games. 
<laughs> and we had we had people, you know, they had a game. It was like all my children board game, you know, a soap opera for all <laughs> for women. Wow. And that cost them, I think I heard of like a hundred and some thousand to get that developed. <sighs> and we had spies, our department, we knew everything's going on in the company. Uh, and every department, we you know, we knew everybody. And they'd tell us, and um, I think we knew how much product sold every month. We had people in shipping and stuff that would tell us. And we, I think that, that all my children at games sold about three games in a quarter. You know, three. three. And uh, then they, oh, and I did these covers for, um, it's, uh, you know, the Pick a Path books. It was, you know, the fantasy, you, you choose your own adventure books, you know. Right, right. They were selling real well. Well, somebody got a bright idea. We'll do them for girls. But that time, there, there wasn't girls. three girls in the country that was playing D&D. It was yeah. all boys. I said, you're not going to sell them. Well, girls should be used to be fair. I said, it's not that. They're not into that. They want to be cheerleaders. They're Barbie dolls. It's, they're not doing D&D. They're not in fantasy. And um, so they did it. I did covers for four of them, and those didn't sell anything. I mean, I think it was a quarter of them, I'd be like two books sold in the world. <laughs> so they had to change all those. And, uh, it was stuff like that. That's when I started uh, taking on all the – I'd go to Chicago and go over to Western Publishing. I was doing Princess of Power sticker fun books, He-Man coloring books. I started doing stuff for um, uh, um, Thundercats. I did toy packaging for Thundercats. I did no, toy no, packaging no. for Willow. Uh, the Willow Toys. I did all that artwork. Um, I was doing everything on the side. I was I was pulling on two full time jobs. I work at TSR in the day and paint all day and come home at night and paint all night. Sleep yeah. up five hours. <laughs> and um, and then you know Keith, he could see the writing on the wall, same as me. And we decided I would quit first, and I'd find us a studio, and then he would quit, and uh, we we would just freelance. He was starting to get freelance work too. And I was getting Jeff freelance work too. I would take him to Chicago with me, and uh, with his portfolio, and we'd show it to the companies. I got did a lot of model car box covers, and <laughs> everything, whatever would pay you. Because I thought if they go under, I'm stuck here. I bought a house up here and everything. You know, uh, I was going to live there, but I thought, man, I, I'm not ready for this. And at that time, Walworth County, the county that TSR was located Lake Geneva this is the most expensive county in Wisconsin yeah. and uh, if I was going to stay and if I you know if I ever decided to get a bigger house I couldn't afford it you know I couldn't afford to buy the property bill a bigger house <clears throat> so I freelance there up until uh, a few more years I think let's see we you know, we built this house we built this house in 88, and uh, I moved down here in 88, 89, something like that. And we built, we took the same money what it cost to buy a decent house up there and built a really nice house here on an acre and a half of land, a big house. There you go. And, um, and then Keith, he moved. We shared a studio for about a year and a half, and then he moved to Pennsylvania. And uh, Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Do you know where in PA he moved? Huh? Do you know where in PA he moved? Was it Western yeah, or Eastern? Uh, it was East uh, Eastern. Um, Lan Lanca uh, Lancaster. Yes, that's okay. what it was at. Not for all right. Okay, and, uh, he wanted to move there so he could drive in, go into New York a lot and get work. And I'm like, pissed on it. I'll just take what work I can get and move <laughs> to Kentucky. And uh, my parents were. I thought then my parents were getting old, and my wife's parents were getting old. We thought. Of course, we were like 41 years old, so 65 or 62 seemed like seemed ancient to us. Like, they're really getting old. Maybe and we better move back and maybe help them if they need help. Well, my mom's still alive. She's 93. I'm 74. And dad only died like a year or two. He was 93. And uh, we moved back, built the house, and it's like, they don't need our help. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so but i kept my connections going and just kept publishing by then though finally you know you had fedex you had 
the reason I had to get out of this case, there was no FedEx here. Really? In the 70s. No, it was news. FedEx was brand new. It finally had. It finally got to the point when I, when I did the, that calendar cover I was telling you about. I was still living here. There was one place, and the, they, they told me somebody in town, some lawyer told me, said, "Federal Express will pick up at this one restaurant in town at a certain time of day, and you got to have your stuff there, and they'll pick it up. And when they deliver, they deliver to the same restaurant. You got to go in, pick it up. And um, so I used that restaurant twice, and. Uh, <laughs> Or a few times, I can't remember. I'd take it, <laughs> drop it off. Drop it off at a restaurant. Oh and then God. finally, um, finally, they opened up a, a drop-off pickup place, and I and I started doing that, and then then I moved to Wisconsin. But yeah, the technology really changed a lot. You can live anywhere now. You yep. used to, you had to live in Chicago, New York, or if you live in the eastern part of the United States, western, you had to go all out to California. And stuff if he's ever going to get get going and i, I hated that I, so thank god technology you could live any place in the world yeah absolutely so speaking and of technology have you adopted digital painting or are you still no, using? i don't want to do it i don't yep. want to do it <laughs> yep. i don't like this i mean the whole point in doing art to me is doing it by hand mm -hmm. by creating like a sculptor okay yep. now you know, these companies anymore. You can get programs. Uh, it blew me away. I didn't know this. On your screen is a bar of clay. You got two of the tools. You can sculpt it all and then you yep. can print it. Mm -hmm. Well, that just takes all the fun out of it. I mean, I like it with my hands. I like the yeah. feel of the brush. I, you know, inking a big, nice ink drawing, like say a big, you know, like a at least 18 inches tall drawing without a mistake and inking with a brush. That's the difference. No mistakes. No undo, no layering. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a payoff. I mean, yeah. it's self set Like, look at that. I did it. I didn't think I could, but I did it. And yeah. if there's a little mistake somewhere, you could always, you know, work work it into something, you know. Mm -hmm. But nothing major, you know. But I mean, you, so you're finished, and there's a complete ink drawing without. What? Well, sure. There we go. Let's, yeah, let's see. Print right here of a drawing. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. wow. It's a large ink drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was done, I mean, it's it's this big, okay? Yeah. And it's beautiful. That was inked that size without a mistake. Uh, with a brush. Mm -hmm. That's and great. That, that, that That's so insane. much fun. That takes training and and and, and practice and and, yep. and and painting like I said, people say well what's your masterpiece what's your best work on i don't know my next one <laughs> my next that was one. awesome <laughs> yeah that was oh, great you're always like i finished one like, that's pretty good i probably could have done that better <laughs> and, uh, the next one's going to be really great. And something, yep. goes wrong, something happens now. That's not the best one. Look, so look. you're always looking for your masterpiece. And I, somebody asked me that the other day. I said, I, to be honest with you, after I'm dead, if they look back and see my paintings, the there'll be some painting that I've done in the past. Not my last painting. I'll still be looking for that masterpiece. <laughs> you know, that, that great painting. When I'm dead, I'll be looking for it. And, and the public will decide which was my best painting ever. And they can't even do it fairly because if they're D&D &D players and Dragonlance fans, they're going to be partial. <laughs> so I don't know. I do know I've, had, I've got two or three paintings that I've saved for the, that I would not sell because they were, I call it, I was painting out of my head. I was painting above my ability. And one of them is... Um, uh, Avaline, the life giver. It was a cover dra dragon magazine. Yeah. Cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No I think yeah. I have that right here. I do. And matter of yeah. fact, here, let's switch. I do. Oh, yeah. The, have, I uh, have it in this. Yeah. This yeah, one. That, that, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. That's, that's, that's and I still nice. own that one. And the other one, well, the other, I got it down here because I'm getting a new frame for it. I have this, I bought a signed copy of it. 
and gave that to friends on her. Oh, uh, look at this. Oh, we're getting yep. some of the real. Oh, man. Look yep. at the. Oh, I see the one behind Jeez. that. Oh, jeez. I just found varnish this painting the other day and never been varnished. And my wife wanted to get a bigger frame. But you all probably seen this one. Oh, oh yeah. yes. This yeah, is yeah absolutely. That is fantastic. The That's the. Wear it all over it. The Witch yeah. series, yeah, yeah, I love that. Oh, I have yeah. one. Of, all right, so I have. I, I was telling Larry, I have the Shara's tree in my basement. Aaron, you've seen it—the one with the, yeah. the yeah. druid or the it's sitting in the tree. I have that in my yeah. basement. Well, that was a Dragon Magazine cover. Yeah, yeah, yep. the talking about the girl in the tree was a dragon. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. There it is. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, uh, I, did of, uh, I did a lot of Dragon Magazine covers because. TSR owned the rights of stuff you did for TSR. Oh, Dragon yeah, Magazine, yeah. Dragon Creative. Magazine was owned by TSR, but the work you did for them, you owned the rights to. Oh, that's good to hear. Oh, oh that's great to hear. And I wondered like, about that. They told me that, like, oh, well, I'll do a ton of it. all of it's on the. I summer. do a, a lot of them, and so I did probably ten or twelve Dragon covers, and you couldn't get. They couldn't have you doing it full time, you know. They, yeah, that's, yeah that was. My first one, dragon cover. Oh, oh, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred eight. So I have in this tube here, which I just recently got from, from yeah. uh, Larry's wife. I have yeah. this. I have the original, uh, you know, uh, great teamwork one. That's that uh, legendary, known for like Sears. This is a Sears cover. Yeah. yeah. Sears Signed. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm not giving these out tonight. <laughs> and I, no, I'll tell you. And 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 this wonderful new friend in here, twenty four by thirty. Like two days ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, ago, yeah. I got, yes, exactly. Right. Well, guess what? These are going to be complimentary giveaways in dollar order for donations for our St. Jude fundraiser coming up. Uh, you know, in February. So note wow. that. Yep. I may get a couple more from Larry too. So uh, well, I'll see. Well, uh, if I know what it's for, uh, you've contacted me before. I will. It's, I mean, you have before about this, I think. Yeah, maybe. I, I did. I did. Yeah, I did about St. Yeah. Jude. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, you know, and it's a, it's our big event. We have nine streams, and we have some wonderful things. Yeah, so uh, we the, can the talk. Reason I, the reason I didn't get to do more, I don't know what's happened. The last, the last two or three years, this is going on the third year, fourth year, I don't know. I've got to do something. I'm going to, have to get off of some of the social media. I don't like it that much anyway, but through Messenger and Facebook, I found out now. I mean, I've had the guy that runs my website is a great guy. Yeah. He's made I make more money on the website than I ever dreamed I would. It's crazy. And but it's because of him. He put the site together, he does advertising and everything else. But I was telling him, I said, now with with on Facebook. I only go to my basic Facebook and talk to, but I've got a fan Facebook page and stuff that's built for me. Now, like, I've got like too many places. Almost, it's like forty some thousand people, yeah. and if I post anything much, then you get some responses. But there's always people asking for so many things. Yeah, you know, uh, even local people. They said they say, oh, 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 could you teach my son how to draw? Not just the local, but there's mm. all over the world. And people want you to draw this for them or paint that for them or ask your advice. It's, a lot. Look at the it's getting so bad yeah. that I had a big contract painting I had to do. I started it in like July, I think. And I, I finished it last week. And that is crazy. That many months to finish a painting. Most of the time, I don't care how big the painting is. It could I could always do it like in a in a, a month and a half, you know, big thirty by forty, and working every day on it. But six months, and the reason for that is just constant, constant distraction. Yeah, yeah. And um, and and then you know, and my wife and she's doing the shipping and printing in here, so she's in the studio all the time. Well, she's putting prints around. You can't do the work over here. Can't lay nothing over here. And I understand it, but but I told James, the guy that runs my website, I said, I'm going to have to go incognito uh, something. I don't know what to do. It, I said, it, get out of it all. 
Yeah, but it's I meaning you, you're a thousand times more popular than me, and I still have to spend over an hour a day at least. Yeah. I should spend two, three, four hours a day on, on all the, the Discord, Facebook website, and everything. And I can't and respond it's, to everybody. Exactly, it's, it's getting here. overwhelming. I <laughs> want to, you wouldn't uh, have a life. I mean, exactly, oh, I want yeah. to sit and do do my, my, my work, so to speak, yeah. and, and, and produce. So, so that's why explanation that I disappear. So I do it like yeah. three, four times a week, and then I take every Every other day, I take off social media and stuff. I'm not even on it, well, just to, to maintain. I it. understand. It's yep. like uh, I don't know. It's yep. it's okay, Larry. I understand well, I decided, that. Mm -hmm. I decided uh, yep. to stop doing contract paintings. Well, per private contract painting. Well, that was up to twenty thousand dollars a painting. I kept raising the price to stop people, and they kept doing it. <laughs> oh my and gosh! Like, yep. God, wow. I don't care if it's 50000 I want to paint for myself. I'm yeah. getting old. I don't have many years left. So I set a deadline. And so at this year, Is that I'm not doing any more contract painting. Not going to take any. Now I've got one left over from last year because I took too much time on this other one, too many interruptions. So I've got one big one to do for Keith Bloom. And it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a good one. It'll be a high impact. It'll, it'll be good prints. But the size of it will be the impact if you see the original. And then um, after that, I've, I've got, I'm committed to one other painting, and that's Tracy Hickman. Uh, one of the Dragonlands. No, that's no? not Dragonlands. Oh, no. His book she's done. Oh, okay. 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 I knew that Dragonlands come back. Fire out of the air and stuff, or whatever it's called. Uh, I keep thinking of the name. That's right. what happened for 73 that's years. That's okay. Ago. Forget little names, <laughs> it's, but you still have those relationships, which is fantastic. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So I, I said I do his, but the rest of the year I've got three paintings on boards for my own to do, and I haven't touched them in another year. Yeah, and uh, and I've got ideas to paint. So the cost I'm is just stop all this stuff. The price and, of fame, and I'm not going to conventions anymore. Yeah. I, I'll do Gary Con every once in a while because Gary Con two reasons. My wife wants to be go because my daughter lives in Oconomowoc in Wisconsin, which is only a 35-minute drive from Lake Geneva. So that's an excuse for us to drive up there and visit there. And then Gary Con, I love it. The other cons were getting too big, too crazy. Mm -hmm. Jim Con, Dragon Con, oh, my God. Loading and unloading was a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, and it's just chaotic, and I couldn't even get a pee break during the day. He's there for eight hours and can't go to the bathroom. Yeah. And um, and so with COVID that year, I didn't go to any conventions. I'm like, wow, that was a load up because you'd sell all the stuff at the convention. You have to come home and start printing again, all the prints, just print, print, print. There's no time to paint. You're printing. Now my wife's retired. Now she does the printing. She starts bitching about it too sometimes. Like, <laughs> I said, but we're making money off of it and we're not driving any place. Yeah, I know. And, uh, but, um, yeah, we'll all but be at Gary Con this year, Larry. All, all three of us. We're doing this show at yeah, Gary Con. So, well, yep. uh, I'm going to see all of you there and talk to you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I like Gary Con. And it's got the flavor of an old, old, old time convention. Yeah. It's not that big. You can, they got, Two bars, or two or three places you can eat right there, and you can get together at night, almost all night, just about, and talk to people and visit. Yep. And it's just a good. It's like cons used to be before they went crazy. Yeah. And he said he's going to limit it. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, it is. It is yeah. limited. But with with tickets. So a couple. Uh, 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 thank you. And uh, like I said, I'll get with you on mm -hmm. what we're doing for St. Jude, and just see if yeah. you know if there's something else you want to do. Yeah. With, you know. That'd be very and cool. you gotta, you gotta tell me not just your name. Name start going. Uh, you, I, me, <laughs> you talk to me here on this. Yeah, I don't worry, don't yeah. worry. I, I, I'll send it just the email. I know yeah, the email, I'll and donate, I would. I'll donate some, okay? Oh, that's great. Thank you. Because we we donate to St. Jude anyway. Okay. A little. Oh. Yeah, St. Jude's our big our big event coming up in yep. middle of February, mm -hmm. and we have nine. Actually, we have uh, uh, we just Greyhawk Reborns joins. So we have the whole thing. We got a lot going on, so we're we're, we're gonna you hopefully send smash. Me the name, send me a name of about five prints. Like you can look on the website and pick out five, and I'll print them up for you. Wow! And send them to you for St. Jude. Thank you. 
I don't want to come visit your house. Wow. No, no, no. no. I, hey, I already yeah. got plenty up. You know that. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Quick things. Uh, then we're going to ask a couple questions. The audience has got sure. some. We, uh, by the way, we have 130 people on watching right now. So, Ooh, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, uh, excuse me. I, I, I'm just a Southern boy. I'm a little stupid sometimes. So, I made mistakes. And you're good. No, this has been fit. This is such a fantastic. Discussion. Yeah, wonderful. This is so iconic. This picture here with, uh, you know, Lorana and Death of Stone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a wonderful the dragon lance you know, too. You know there's something wrong with it though. Okay, let's hear. I don't know if I say that, but it would it would destroy a lot. <laughs> no, it's it, it, it pissed me off when I found out. Is she left handed? No. Okay. I'm it, just guessing. Like, okay, I read the you know, Dragon Lance. And well, I just read that scene. What well, two things is bad. One, we thought, okay. When I was doing these paintings, Dragonlance is going to be a three-year three year program, and it's over. Okay? <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I read the books, the first three books, and I'd read them, and it's like, okay, I like this scene. So I painted, you know, Dragonlance is going to be over. And, uh, well, it didn't end, okay? It kept going. And, um, and so the one thing is it was a big giveaway for all the readers. You know, when the books oh. come out, they're like, well, Storm is dead. He, yeah, spoiler, a huge spoiler. Because it wasn't supposed to last that Good long. Job. And the other <laughs> thing, a fan called me up. He'd read Dragonlance. Dragonlance, he, he called me one time. He said, well, you did something wrong in that painting. I said, what? I read the book. She said, and I've got her. You know, there's a big war going on and everything. I, and, uh, and so he said, she didn't fight that day or the day. Or maybe oh. she didn't fight in this battle. I said, you shit me, man. <laughs> well, you show me this now? <laughs> that, Ten it's years the last after. Scene. After, you know, I've done the painting, sold the original, and everything else. But you could have blamed the art order for it or something. Oh, that's so great. Yep. So, but, uh, wow. I just took for granted she was fighting with everybody, you know. And, <laughs> no, she didn't. But that's... nobody's caught me on that. Only him. Only him. Yep. <laughs> Cool. And, the, and this, I have this on my wall. This is one of my all-time favorites, the Shire's Tree. I love this print. Love it. She's just contemplating. You don't know that what's going on in your head. I love yeah. this one. So, First one I got. The, color, the colors on the original are really good. And it's a 30 by 40. It's a yeah. really big thing. It is. It hangs at the bottom of our stairwell as you go up to where the ceiling's high. It's got a big wall there. And uh, we just got it uh, reframed. Looks really good. That's, yeah. that's what we're keeping. We've got about 16, I guess, all told that we're keeping. The others that have been sold, I didn't sell them because I wanted to. I sold them because the life of an artist is up and down. Right. And freelancing, my wife worked, but her paycheck did not pay for running everything. So I had to work my buns off freelancing. And sometimes you don't get paid on time. Sometimes it might be three months before you get paid. Sometimes you never get paid, so you don't work for that publisher anymore. And yep. so up and down, and we get the points. We we had to make a house payment. We had to, you know, we had two kids, school, everything, and uh, I'd have to sell a painting and Stay. get the most money I could. And back then, you know, I sell a painting for three or four thousand, and good painting, and that was like good money. And now those same paintings. Well, I know some of those was bringing me. I know some collectors would pay super big money. Absolutely, more than I could Absolutely. ever imagine when I was back then. If you're getting twenty thousand, fifty thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. And I wish I had some on backup, but but I look at it this way: what was my main goal in life? To make a living and take care of my family and paint and draw. I did. It, it. sounds like you enjoyed it every step of the way. I too. did I enjoy it. And if you have to sell some of your, some you like. You have to sell them. Yeah. To keep doing what you love doing. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so, so the offering, wonderful dark elf female in yeah. this one. Love this one. I have this on my wall too. Trial so, or what? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really a great that one. Was a, and I, I let's see, is that the one? I think it's the one. <laughs> I almost have like a story I could talk to you later. Off, but I, <laughs> let's keep I just finished yeah. painting, right? And I was going to a convention and Cincinnati, maybe, and and uh, there's some guys down from Alabama. Something's going. 
they drove my house one to ride with me all on up there too. And I, they, I think they helped run a little convention somewhere and we were friends then. So we was going up, driving to Cincinnati. I started telling them about, we was talking about old, the difference between North and South, the difference between old people from the South and newer people, younger people. And I said, well, I grew up, your word was it. You know, if you said, uh, somebody say, how much you want to sell that old cow for? If you said $30, and they said, well, but there was no backing out. Your word was your bond, period. And so, so I'm at this convention and I hang that original. I took it, I was hanging up there. I had two or three original. And one, this young kid looking guy, he's a young guy. He comes up and he said, would you sell that painting, that original? I said, I don't really want to. He said, well, put a price on it. And, <laughs> um, kid. Okay, this is, I've been telling these guys driving up there how Southerners, they stick to the word, you know, old time the men I used to know. And I thought, well, he's a kid. I'll put a high price on it, which $4,000 $4, that time was a high price. I said, $4,000. He said, I'll buy it. Wow. <laughs> and Dang. One of the guys from, from, from Georgia, where I was from, he was there beside me. He looked at me and said, Hey, is your word going to be good on this one? <laughs> I told him, come up there, I didn't want to sell that painting. <laughs> I sold it. And that's happened to me about twice. Uh, to be a kid, I was at a college, and I had a big big wraparound cover painting. And I was there, and I didn't, you know, I didn't think anybody at a college was going to buy it. So this kid comes up. He looks like he's about 18 years old, and he said, would you sell that painting? I said, I, it'd, it'd be quite a bit of money. You know, and he said, well, how much? I said, well, I'd sell it for, I think I'd price it like 5000 which was a lot of money then. He said, I'll be right back. I'm going to get a check. I'm going to get my checkbook. And he come back down and wrote me a check for $5,000. And back then, you trust him. He took the original. I took the check. The check was cashed. It was good. But I, I didn't really want to sell it. But that's happened a few times. <laughs> That's awesome, though. I mean, it, right? it, but those people remember that for the rest of the, remember it forever. You know, yeah, that relationship. So, so this I, I want to show this one because this is the one I don't have that I need to get because I have a character based after this picture. Yeah. Uh, if Bill's on her name's Florentia, she was actually in World of Warcraft and is in, in my Greyhawk campaign as well too. Oh. You know, so I I, nice. I just love the look of this one and all. Friends, different sizes. I can do big ones too. Yeah, so I can need to order that one. On web, might not sell on a website, but I can do a okay. twenty-four inches. Yeah, the early snow one. Uh, like thirty something. You know. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and yeah. so I, here comes question rounds. Now, let me go back to. Yeah. I want. I want to ask you a specific. Uh, everyone's asking. Did you play D and D at TSR? And I think you told me a little bit. You did, and you had fun with it. And could you tell a little bit of the experience? Oh, it was great. Not uh, the only person that played. D and D at the art department was Keith Parkinson. He was a DM. He was younger than us. He was 21 when he got hired. And I would say if he could have lived, uh, you know, um, he died of what was it, leukemia or something like that. Memories get bad, but I, I saw him about a week before he died in California. I flew out there. Oh man! But if he could have lived, his art would have been better than all of us put together. At 20 some, you know, you remember the painting he did is called What Do You Mean We're Lost? It sees uh, draconians going through the snow and, and yep. one of yeah. them said, mm -hmm. that painting, that original is beautiful. He was like 23 or four years old when he painted Whoa. that. Whoa. I didn't know that. Wow. The colors just fed. Yeah. He was yeah, a he's... great colorist. Um, I learned a lot of color from him. I wasn't good at color. And I taught him a lot on drawing. He wasn't really good at drawing. You know, the anatomy and stuff. Um, I was good at drawing, but I, my colors, I had a limited palette. But um, I got off track again talking about that painting. But what what was the painting we was talking about before that? Uh, uh, early snow. Early snow. Yeah. Um, that's, we had here, it was like in October, early October. We had a a big snow and it wasn't that cold outside just a big snow and i grabbed my camera and, and start driving i'm always doing this take it off down the road and luckily i haven't wrecked yet but i'm 
I got my 35 millimeter trying to take pictures and everything and blind it, it's still dry. And um, this hill, I always liked that hill and I had this one lone tree on the hill. Yeah. And that snow was on there and the grass and stuff was still green looking underneath there. It was just really neat. And so I snapped a shot of that. And then um, that was a cover of Dragon, but it's a horizontal painting. Yeah, vertically. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I thought, well, I want to paint this. This hill was this lonely old dead tree. And so I thought, well, i got to get a girl in there. So I just shot this as a high school back then <laughs> now you can't just shoot any model any girl walks in you'll get in trouble you can run a big chance of yeah. if they're 21 don't even get and 200 yards okay <laughs> but I, back then you know in the south i don't know it was pretty loose and, and a lot of my girls they'd come and want to model for me i'd say my girls my model and they were 18 17 you know, and uh, and I, I didn't do anything bad. I'd shoot them in a bathing suit or, or put some old garb on them and wrap them up and take pictures of them. And they were happy. I was happy. And um, and so but I look back now, like any one of them could have just made up something and destroyed my career. You know, and now I don't. I hardly shoot anybody anymore. But um, I'd shot this girl and I and I in a black robe. And she was holding it like that. And I like that pose. And she had this wild looking hair. And it was, it was, um, it wasn't as red as I painted it. It was right. It was Let me put this back up. And um, so um, I just made up the old house uh, and stuck that in there. I, love, I, love, that. I love that old cottage. It yeah, looks I love the that, that, memories from Europe, you know. When I, was in, when I was sent to Germany. My wife and I, I love Germany, well, a lot of Europe. You can never get lost. You, you, <laughs> go, you just go out any road and it'll tell you there'll be a sign what the next village is going to be and how many kilometers. You get to that village and there are the signs telling you which road you can go to to get to other villages. You just take any road. When you get to that village, there's a sign and you can go in a big circle and come back home. You know, <laughs> never even worry about getting lost. But we'd go on these big drives like this and I was taking pictures of landscapes, houses. But, it, but mainly, when I'd see something in a house get up close to an old place, I would just try to put it to memory. And I also studied the inside structure of some of these things. There's a painting in there. It's, um, I can't think of the name of it. But I, as a self-portrait of me, sitting at a table, and I'm holding like a, actually it's a, uh, a rope with a key on it. And there's two uh, robe figures uh, in, in the room. Well... And it's inside of an old, old type, typical house that had been built, could have been built hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But it's, it's where I just, that was all painted from memory, that just looking at the structure and how it was built. I would look at stuff like that when I was over there and I, and I would remember the basic, I might not be 100% correct. If you could pull back one of those carpenters from 200 years ago, he'd probably tell you, <laughs> you got this wrong and that wrong, but it's good enough for fantasy, you know? <laughs> And, uh, but, but yeah, I just, uh, uh, I see I've talked again and wandered away from. It's all right. Oh, it's uh, wonderful. People love, yeah. uh, trust me, our, our, the audience That's doesn't care. Audience just doesn't like care. like the signs in Germany, you'll circle around back to it. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I took a lot of reference photos and where I lived, uh, uh, oh man. Yeah. I forgot a... the name of the village, but there was a 13th century, a castle built in 1200. Just about two miles from me, and I had to go with that. And it was, it wasn't destroyed. It was, it was in good shape. Eventually, they started giving tours to it. But, um, but when the last year I was, the last few months I was in Germany, they started giving tours, and I got to go inside. But I would go out there, and walk around it and look at it. You couldn't get in that a metal gate, so you couldn't get into the castle itself. But I would just, I don't know. I just lay up against the castle, the stone, and just, just feel it, you know, just the age. And uh, I don't know if anything hit me, but I'm like, just open my mind up, just feed me <laughs> something. You know? uh, but the age of that, it's like, God bless, how old yeah. is it? It's perfect. And yeah. I loved all that. I was at a convention in Spain, 
and it was in a it had once been this big building has once been a ship museum a ship builder they built ships there a long time ago mm -hmm. and a the guy they was having a, a, a like a little gin con there tsr was put on this in barcelona and so they had me there as a guest and i wasn't even working for tsr then i was freelancing but i went and the, the, the man, the curator of the place, of the museum, um, he took me over to the other section where all the ships and stuff was at. He wanted to show me around. And, and this is a big stone building, huge. And it was just big, heavy stone. And in front of it, it had these big stone steps. And he takes me out. He takes me through everything. And he said, most of the ships here was built for Mediterranean, and the way their sails and stuff were constructed, as you could tell, it was, it was going out into the ocean or staying in the Mediterranean. I'm like, Ooh, didn't know that. And um, so we come finish up these huge wooden doors, he opened one, and we stood on those steps. And he said, now, when this was built, the sea came right up here to the steps. He said, now it's about, about 300 yards away. You couldn't see the sea there. And he said, but on these steps, Queen Isabella met Christopher Columbus on his, one of his return voyages, his first return voyage. I'm like, holy cow. It's true. The building was here then, using, and it, and America hadn't been discovered. You know, <laughs> that's what I like, that's what I like, America, if you, I know, especially if you lived in Europe, and you come to America, and I've been there lots of times, conventions, and I try to stay as long as I could. When you come back to America, America is a teenager. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're a kid. Yep. Europe is our is our fathers, our grandfathers, our great, great, great. It's all meaning that the, the house <laughs> yeah, the house complex I lived in prior to move here was built in the 1600s yeah. and and we had a, an, an old church that had the keep that was a medieval keep the tower and then they built a church later yeah. that tower was from the 900s god bless oh. see yeah you can't experience that here yeah so it was kind of, and and i walked I, I had my exercise run past it and I was like thinking that was and and when I lived in an earlier village they had a, another old church that were built as a tower that one was when, when I, I read the, the history and that they made fantasy movies of how Sweden was made they actually signed those papers and 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 stuff back in the day they really? did that in that tower so that wow. was kind of cool so there was old wow. stories and 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 now I realize people say it's an old house it's built in the 60s and it was like that that's that's not old. <laughs> so, so America, it's a different perspective. Yeah. In America, if it's a hundred years old, that is old. Yeah, yeah. In California, I see where I live is even even more so, so to speak, because yeah. there is hardly anything here that is older than 150, yeah. 200 years. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, are you yeah. ever in Portugal? Uh, nope, never been. Okay. Oh, Portugal. Someone, is someone asked that in the question. So yeah. uh, I'd like to go. <laughs> so D and D. Just yeah. on the game. Oh, yeah. You're just going to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want to answer. I love it. The this audience is a long way away. Yeah, this the is audience is I'm trying to answer the audience's okay. questions. <laughs> okay, I'll do, try to do this quick. Stay on, stay on <laughs> Keith could run a game. Now the rest of us can play. And so, so um, I decided to be a dwarf fighter and Elrod the Red because when oh, I was yeah. young, I had copper colored hair. Okay. I'm short. I'm a fighter. Clyde was a, uh, a bard. Um, Jeff was our ma magic user. And uh, I guess I was the only fighter. Then uh, Steve Sullivan started playing with me. He's a map maker. And he uh, he was um, he was playing in an opera now. I think he was um, he, the cleric. And anyway, we started playing, and I loved it. We all loved it. It was like magic. If you're creative, if you've got a creative bone in your body, you're living it. And here's something else. It's like, I can read a book. I have this happened to me. I read a book, you know, 30 years ago, and I pick it up, and I'm like, oh, I haven't read this, and I read the first. I might have to read five chapters before I realize, oh, I, 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 I've read this book. You know? <laughs> yeah. And your memory works different ways. In D and D, you can remember so much from a from a campaign. 
Yeah. Your brain records it like an experience. Yeah. Not like a something. Not even like a movie. Yeah. That makes sense. Because in your mind, you're working together. It's recording it as an adventure. Yep. What always fascinated me in the game, we're all there in the same room in a big castle we're exploring. I wonder, I would love to see the mental picture of each person there. It's all different, but we're all working together in the same room. Yep. That And that's magic starts to happen, you know. Yep. And, and you remember it differently. And, and I loved it. And I, I, was, I was always been a fighter by nature. I don't mean going out picking fights, but I mean fighting for survival for your life. And like, like we were talking about earlier, adrenaline rushes can get you in trouble sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I was a fighter. And um, anyway, I got killed so many times. That my, <laughs> well, my, it's, it's all right. old school. Be, be, be my old charisma guy. was so low that one would <laughs> it didn't put me in the back because I think just looking at me would have, Turn most people off. I don't. Well, you had one of these monsters that charmed you or something, and you were you were kind of in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I had some kind of spell put on me. I know at night my ears yeah. were real long when the sun <laughs> went down. And um, but it was so much fun. And um, what stopped it is um, is um, TSR I was getting in trouble. Yeah. And they started firing people, and some we was losing some of the players. And I know they, they let Steve Sullivan go. And and um, he was our cleric. And what we would do, they'd already take you to take over. You have to play two two characters, your character and another character, and keep the game going. I didn't know how to play a cleric. I'm a fighter. So I'm a cleric now. I'm playing his character. That is sheet there. Okay, we when he got fired, we was in the middle of uh, fight, getting ready to fight a beholder. Okay? So... I didn't know for sure what. A, what's good? We didn't know what all the monsters could do. You know, we was all virgin for that. We never every monster we met was new to us. We might have painted mm -hmm. them, but we didn't know how to play. Oh, jeez! And so I'm playing the cleric, and so my Elrod he makes a fight. He's fighting it. And the magic user does something. They come around the cleric. So why are you gonna do this? And I've got a mace. I'm attacking. Well, the, the disintegrator ray or eye of the beholder just dissolved my character, the, my cleric character. And everybody hated me for that because <laughs> I killed the cleric. And we were in a world of hurt because he was all about half dead when it was over with and didn't have a cleric. And uh, I forgot how we got out of that mess. But, uh, <laughs> Keith ran the game. He was very creative. A lot of riddles and everything you had to solve or you could get killed. Uh, it was a great, mm. I loved it, loved it. Uh, if it wasn't so time consuming, I'd play it the rest of my life. But it is, yeah, it's time consuming, and art is yeah. time consuming, mm -hmm. so the two don't go together. But I loved it, and I, I told people, I said, if you want to play a good, the best game you're ever going to play in your life, play DD mm -hmm. with a group of friends. So, I want to ask a question on how you, uh, how this partnership came about, and that is, and I, we love these Dark Sword. And your masterwork, the miniatures sculpted, the actual pictures sculpted into miniatures. Masterworks, Elmore. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, oh, it's sort of crazy. It's another story. Oh, good, good, good story. Um, oh man, you're getting old again. I'm trying to think of the name of the owns the company. Jim. Uh, let's just call him Jim. <laughs> yeah, that was, yes, dark. I was sitting here painting one day, and some guy. Calls me up. I think he lived in Minnesota. Yeah, he did. He calls me up and he said, he was a little bit cocky. He's like, why are not you having toys done to your artwork? I said, I don't know. I, I don't know any toy people. I, I don't know. He said, well, toys should be should be done of your artwork. That's looking up great. He said, how about miniatures? And I said, well, I think TSR has had, um, what was it, one of the old, old companies back then, Ralph Partha, yeah. I think, done a couple of little things. Something. And I, he said, well, you should be doing it. You should check into it. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I don't have time to do that. You know, and he calls me up a couple more times later on that year. And still sort of bitch at me for not doing, uh, mentioning, like, I don't know how to do it. It's I 2007. Paid. 
And so he, uh, he's, so he calls me you know, a year or so goes by and he says, well, I'm going to start doing here miniatures. I said, you are? He said, yeah. He said, I'm starting a miniatures company. And uh, I said, well, good for you. He said, I want a bunch, I want to do the rights to do a bunch of your figures. He said, but I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> he had money, but to run his house, he, he was a banker. Yeah. In Minnesota. And, um, and uh, what's the Twin Cities up there? Anyway, he, um, I said, well, if you want to do miniatures, I said, just, I, 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 I never, since I wasn't playing D&D, &D, I couldn't play it. I, I, I had a bunch of miniatures. I sort of collected and I quit. There's just too many. And this is before they started doing the miniatures in my work. And he said, uh, he said, you can let me have the rights to do it. I said, you can have the rights, you know, for so much. And I said, pay me a little something or wow, something. And he said, okay. And he started Dark Sword, Jim Dark Ludwig. Sword. Jim Ludwig is the name. And he started Dark Sword Miniatures. And so he paid me some for a while. And then he decided, he just paid me out for miniatures. I went, okay. So now I've got a basement full of miniatures. <laughs> and some of them are probably rare and old. Um, I don't know what their value is, but I've got a lot of miniatures from his company. And uh, and and he done really, really well. And oh, it's like any other artists and everything. Because you yeah. see these and you go, oh my gosh, that's from the Dragon Magazine. Like, yeah. and the detail, and they're all metal. These are metal. These aren't plastics. It's all metal, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a whole series. There's dragons, too. There's yeah. dragons yeah. that are done, too. Not just the... You got know. a big dragon. One of my big dragons. The red one. I'm not put together yet. I've got yeah. a couple of boxes. <laughs> yeah, so um, we love that. We love these. Absolutely. It's just fantastic. I uh, like miniatures. Uh if I had another life, I'd collect them, you know, and paint them. But yeah. there's too much mm. to do in one life, you know. <laughs> it's really, yep. I don't understand why people can be bored. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, there's too much. Find something you like to do and do yep. the hell and out of it. And keep doing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. Uh, if you love it, you'll, you'll do it. Yep. Uh, and, and, and there's... I yep. mean, anymore, there's there's nine, nine easy and more ways to make a living than there used to be. Yeah. Yet. There was very few ways to make a living. And now there's all kinds of ways. Yeah, meaning that, get a passion or two and then pursue yeah, them real, pursue real hard and get good at yep. them. And, and then you can you can have fun and, and you and, can... And for all you people out there, if you're very young and you want to do this, you can't compete right now with somebody who's <laughs> doing it for 30 years. Don't try to... You look at some master sculptor, you want to <laughs> master, this guy's been doing it forever. Yeah. You can't beat him right now. But if you keep doing it in a few years, you'll be equal to him. Mm -hmm. And who yep. knows, if you got the ability, a few more years, you'll be better. You yep. don't know until you give it 100% or yep. 110%. You got you to go over 100%, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to do something for a few thousand hours before you get really good yes. at it. Yeah, and I because of me working and not sleeping that much, I lived off of nicotine and caffeine. I smoked. Uh, I drank, a, you know, Mountain Dew. Not much Mountain Dew, just straight black coffee. Okay, <laughs> it's a high caffeine yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. And uh, and I've had um, a stroke. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mm. messed me up for about three months. I was right in the middle of painting, but I stayed with it. And the doctor said. You probably won't be able to paint for years. I said, to hell, I'll be painting. i got to finish the painting I'm working on. <laughs> and uh, so and three months later, I'd, already, I'd finished that painting and done two more paintings. But uh, they weren't as good, but they were good enough. The people, that the publisher didn't know the difference. But I was, um, a lot of people said, well, you're lucky. Uh, you can still use your hand good. I was like, what they didn't know, I was unlucky. It happened in in the right side of my brain, which creative side. I had, it hit my left side, the creative side. So my right hand worked good. No, oh. the opposite. The opposite. It happened in the creative side of my brain, but my right hand was working. It's the creative side that was suffering, and uh, 
and it took me a while to luckily the, my next project or two I already had sketched out so I just went through the motion retrained my right, right hand and uh, I got a split keyboard because my right hand wouldn't type so I had to teach it to type uh, a lot of things I did uh, really to, to recover because if I can't paint shoot me I'm done you know just sit me in a home isn't the uh, story that Frazetta taught himself to paint with his other I think hand? He did. He painted left handed. Right. See, it didn't, it didn't affect my right hand, but it affected my creativity. And that was rough, but it finally came back. And uh, I had a good friend at that time. And I, I, I went through, like a year later, deep depression, almost suicidal. I'm sorry and a friend of mine lived here. He was a big fan of my art. And uh, he come over and he would um, he come one time and he said, "Look, you've got to get out of this depression. You know, you've got to do something on what? You know, I just just I wasn't creative. I was just totally, you know, suicidal. And I mean, it's going through my brain. I just might as well die. I could kill myself. I've got all kinds of weapons here Oof. <laughs> for props. I could and you know, I could easily in myself." And uh, I didn't. I didn't want to. But it was, uh, if you've ever been deeply depressed, you know what goes. Is. You're not thinking right. So he came over and had a big drawing. He said, "Get a big drawing pad out." So I did. And I'm sitting there at my desk. It tilts and everything. And, and uh, he said, "Now let's just think of things you might want to paint." I'm like I don't want to do this. I can't think. But he keeps pushing me. And pretty soon we're doing sketches. I'm doing big, rough sketches. And. Uh, and we did it all day. And from those sketches, some of my paintings came from. And some of these sketches, I still want to, I still want to do something from some of them. But I think that was a turning point there. Uh, I didn't know it at the time because I suffered deep depression for a solid year. And that was about the middle of the year when he did it. I started, I think I turned a corner then and started slowly getting better. So it's good. To, it's good to share. It's good to know and share that because people know that yep. you know you've had this great success and even you know something oh, like you that. Kidding. You know, it's yep. good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate oh, you sharing that with us. Two things happen now that it's like, uh, yeah, you don't give up. Uh, one thing that changed me. I used to tell people that were depressed or something I'm like, eh, there's no too, there's no problem too big you can't run from. You know, you can't just pack up and run. You know, you don't, don't think suicidal thoughts. Yeah. No, run away. Yeah, depressions are like growing it, it pains. Follows you. It, it's, it's you. You can't yeah. run away from it. Yeah. And so my heart really went out to people that suffered depression a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um and then the other thing was was um, valuing <laughs> the true value of not being depressed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Depression uh, is a bit like growing uh, pains. I've it's had three. Thing, yeah. yeah. In, in my life, and and it's yeah. it's. I was but, reading up on it and said most people, most of the population will have at least one bout of depression in their life. Yeah. 85% like of people will. Yep. And then there's uh, that percentage, another percentage will have two or more. I'm like, oh my yep. God, one's enough. And it was a long year. And uh, but, uh, yep. now when I, and uh, creative people are, can get depressed easier. Because you're putting your soul out there. And, and if you're not being very successful at it, you're struggling to get better. That's where you could end up getting depressed too. But now mine was, I was already being published and I got depressed. But I know a lot of artists, I go to convention, I see some old friends, artists, and, and they didn't act right. They didn't act happy. And I'd get talking yeah. to them. And sometimes they were in the middle of depression. Before I couldn't relate, now I can relate. And I would really, my heart would go out and I would get them aside and find a quiet place and talk. And because I needed somebody to talk to me then and um, somebody that experienced it to talk to me. And so um, I know what they're going through. It's not good, it's, it's horrible. So my heart really goes out to people that, that suffer bouts of depression quite often. That's really, really, sad and um but you can't appreciate it till you've been there when you when you've been there then you know what it's like 
Yeah. But, but like you said, it gives you, it's a gift because after when you don't have an depression, you, you, you kind of enjoy oh. life the, the yeah. better, so yeah. to speak, more of it. Yep. Absolutely. You appreciate what you have. Yep. Yeah. So, Larry, you, you okay for a couple other questions? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, um, I'm sitting in here, my wife, she'll go to bed by herself. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, she wait on me. She's been trained years ago that if she waits for me to go to bed, it might be four in the morning, you know. So, she just goes to bed when she goes to bed. Awesome. Uh, I want to bring up some other, some other of your works oh. as well. Um, uh, you know, because we, uh, some of these I was, I was surprised. And this is the big one I was surprised on. The cover of Shadowrun. I oh, did yeah. not know you did this. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah. I like. I was in the fantasy and science fiction. Yeah. Before I went to work at TSR. I, what movies got me? Star Wars, of course. Right. But I was already into the science fiction anyway. Um, I like fantasy. I didn't like the present. I mean, I like the present. I live in the present. If I'm going to fantasize, I think it'd be boring to fantasize that, okay, I'm a rock star. Uh, what do you do? You can't, okay, so you get number one hit and see so you're rich. No, my fantasy is like exploring, going down a road and you don't know what's over the next hill. It could be anything. Going to a planet that you no one's been to. Mm -hmm. It's always pushing ahead or pushing back into times unknown. I mean, if I had a time machine, the first thing I do is go back to the Celts and the Vikings and see how they lived a while. Uh, I'd like to be invisible so I wouldn't get killed, but <laughs> see how they lived a while. Uh, and it would enhance my fantasy because the people that lived in, lived there, they believed in dragons. They believed in spirits. They believed in it yeah. all. So it was real. There might not have been a far breeze and dragging around that lived in a cave that killed half of them. I don't know. But <laughs> so far as we know, there wasn't. But they believed it. That's what counts. Mm -hmm. And then going, uh, when I was in high school and college, I did research papers on the Gemini Project. This is before it ever flew. And a research project on um, Apollo. I was really interested in space. My dad, I remember telling him one time, I never forgot, it, he said, you know how far away those stars are? And I said, I don't know. I said, far away. <laughs> he said, they're light years away. I said, well, what's a light year? He said, it's just time, you know, the, the distance light can travel in a year. I said, well, how far is that? He said, well, light travels 186,000 miles a second. How far do you think it travel in a year? I'm like, holy oh, cow, yeah, I can't comprehend that. And my dad, I mean, he had a high school education, but he's very smart and he read a lot. And he loved science and he liked fantasy as well. He, he would read a few, not fantasy so much, but he loved space. And, and he got me interested in that. And it's like speaking of oh that, Star Frontiers cover. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Well, Star Frontiers, I was sort of let down because <laughs> they said, we're going to do a science fiction yeah. game. Oh, God, I'd like to do the cover for that. Oh, my God. I'm talking about serious science fiction. I was into it seriously. And so I, so they said, well, you're going to, they finally come down. I was going to do it. I was just all excited. And I said, okay, okay. Well, it was we want some of the characters, the aliens in it. And uh, I'd seen the movie Aliens. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it scared the shit out of me. And <laughs> it was like it. We were like the only ones in that theater. It opened in Louisville in the daytime. And we all quit Fort Knox. We took off that day and went there. And we was the only ones at the theater. And we scared the crap out of us. You know, when that thing bust out of the chest. And we like the fellow. But anyway, so I'm like, <laughs> serious science fiction. They said, okay. All right, I said, well, what does the aliens look like? Well, we got a monkey, like a flying monkey, a flying squirrel. Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> and then we got a free man. Free like, man is. Yeah. And uh, what's the other one? <laughs> like a, sort of like a Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? <son? laughs> I can't do a good painting or something like that. Well, that's it. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> 
So I enjoyed doing it because it was different. It was science fiction. But I hated the characters and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah, like, couldn't yeah. you be more crib? But I felt later it was more geared to a young, what they felt was a younger crowd. But I think the crowd that they geared to, um, the game was too complex for them. And it's the old gamers that played the game, you know. Yeah. And I thought the potential it had, oh my God, the potential it had was unreal. But they blew it. I thought yeah. I mean, it was a good little game fun, but they it had to be expanded and get us out of the world where you meet more aliens, more of this, where anything can happen. But uh, that might have been my that was my first cover. I think the other one we shot, I forgot, they were done pretty close together. Yeah, I yeah, love that son. picture. It's 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 so awesome because it's really like a great landscape painting where yeah, you have yeah, ground, middle yeah. ground and and, yeah, and, there it is and background, yeah. so to speak. The composition yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, beautiful one. To me, picture. you know, a lot of fan I'm not knocking on any fantasy artists because I love about every fantasy artist the pros that does work. But I was at Luxicon last year and they had uh, we said we had like a, a one man show. I was looking at everybody else's work. And, and I've been there before, and, and I, I'm, I'm aware of a lot of the artists. But there was a period there, and it still is a little bit. There's a lot of what I call figures in fog. They got a figure, like maybe a beautiful girl or a tough man, and then there's nothing around it. It's just color or a little vignette or something. I guess because I lived in the country and I played outside my whole life, the landscape... Mm -hmm. That's important. It can kill you or it can yeah. save your life. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, it's been here. It does what it does. You're the little alien guy walking around unless you've been living out in the, in the forest all your life and know how it works. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not on your side. It just does what it does. And the landscape can kill you. It's almost killed me several times. <laughs> and it's my own fault. Climbing a cliff and no ropes and getting stuck and everything else. But I like the landscape. And, and it, it, it enhances the peace. The weather, the time of day, the season. All that the, the, the time of day from morning to night, to the evening. All the lights change, the color change. I love landscapes. And I've noticed that I, almost all my paintings are figure are figures in landscape, mm -hmm. and I like that. Uh, if if you said you can't do a landscape, just do me figures and sort of a smoky background, I'd get bored. Uh, I mean, I might do one one of these days for the fun of it, but I've done very few. A lot of times I'll do just a figure and nothing much behind it. That's probably a preliminary for something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the it's not, it'll go into a painting, but I love doing landscape. Here's Journey, uh, Journey to the Gathering. This is kind of like almost got a Snarf Quest feel to it, right? Well, see those little critters. I love making up little intelligent creatures. Uh, and I think it comes from lots of things. Growing up where I did, at the time I did, I'll tell you a little story. When I, this, this is probably the biggest influence on little creatures. Okay. And this is something you all can do with your kids, young kids, if you got young kids or grandkids. I haven't done it yet. I should do it. Okay. Back when I was about four years old, we lived in the country. Um, I mean, not just we lived in the country in the country, out of gravel road and down under a big hill. And, um, and my dad, after World War II, he got tuberculosis. And at that time, it would kill you. Well, he almost died. The day mom brought me home from the hospital, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis and went to a hospital where he stayed for like a year. Wow. So mom and I, dad had money and saved from World War II. He bought us a little four-room house out in the country with about an acre and a half with it, or a four acres, something like that. At that time, in the rural areas of most states, there was no electricity out there and there was no running water. So I was living like they did in the 20s or 30s or 1800s, you know, and growing up that way. And the woods and the landscape, I mean, 
at night in the summertime, the house would be so hot, you spent most of your time outside. At night, you came inside. Mm-hmm. And I would cool down some. And, and I would draw on, I had no paper and no money. I would draw on paper bags. Mom got from the grocery. Her, her brother would take her to the grocery once a month. She'd get a box with four bags of groceries in it. And the brown bags she would cut out flat. And I would draw on the kitchen table at night under lamplight on brown paper bags. But I love that because people were storytellers. People lived close to the land. And you go visit somebody or, uh, and the houses, you might know their house, but at night it was different with just lamplights. It was dark corners. In the wintertime, all the houses was heated with cold stoves. Mm-hmm. Uh, or a fireplace, but most people couldn't afford fireplaces. They made a flue and stuck a cold stove in there. And then people visited a lot. And they would um, sit around the cold stove, the men would, and keep the fire going while the women would be off with it over the corner more, grouped together, talking. And I would slide in behind the stove in the wintertime as a kid. There's always a distance where the stove pipe on the wall is about a yard. Uh, behind the stove, I'd slide in back there. This is a time when kids were seen and not heard. And um, so I didn't see anybody listen to the older men talk. And um, and especially the oldest ones, I'd keep my eye on those. I was thinking of the day, at that time in my life, those old men were born in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. And uh, they would start telling a story of them going through the woods and this and that. It'd be a scary story, and it was a truth to them. I mean, it was a time superstitions and everything was still alive and well, and a monster could live in the woods. You know, I mean, the older people didn't have a solution for weird things. And I loved that. And this was, when I was about four, we had some company come over. Dad was home then. He would come home to the hospital for maybe three or four months. He'd test positive, I'd go back again. So the first 10 year, years of my life, Dad would be in a hospital for a year, come back home with three or four months and back to the hospital for a year. But he survived it all. He lived to be 93 years old. <laughs> but, but one of those times he was home and Dad's uh, cousin came over with his, had two or three kids. My, they'd be my cousin. And we was just in the, the living room, was one room, the kitchen, the room, house only had four rooms. And, um, we was playing in the living room, and uh, the and we was making too much noise. I guess it kept telling us to quiet down. And finally, mom said, "Okay, if you all be quiet for twenty minutes, the little dummy will come and see you." A little dummy? What's that? You know, what's a little dummy? She said, "He's a little man that lives in the woods, and, and there's a lot of them live there, and uh, <laughs> he don't really have a name. We call him a little dummy because he's a, he's he can't talk." He said, he can't talk. Yeah, he's, he's mute. And uh, we're like, he said, you know, I'll have him come visit you. And we're like, you know, basically, if, if that had been me now, I'd say, you're shitting me, you know. <laughs> uh, but back then, it's like, a, a little man's going to come to visit you? Yeah. Well, um, she said, you, now y'all got to sit and be quiet for a while. And, uh, and, uh, you know, for so many minutes or so long. So we sit in a pretty quiet. Every once in a while we say, is he coming? And they go, yeah, he'll be here. Well, we had a, we didn't have an inside bathroom. So the, the, the outhouse was like uh, across an orchard. You know, it was a pretty good distance away. So this is what happened. Dad gets up, goes out the back door, he's going to the outhouse. Well, he didn't go to the outhouse. No, he's still- so there was another door he could come in through the bedroom. So he comes in the bedroom and goes in and he slides out of the bed. Okay, there's lamplight. So there's not a lot of, there's no light, light in there. It's just the doors open to the bedroom door so the light, the light from the living room can shine in. So mom made up some excuse to go in there and check something in the bedroom. So we didn't pay any attention to her. She's not, she, so. A few minutes later, she comes out. Well, I think she took a lamp with her when she went. A few minutes later, she comes out and she sits down and she says, "You know what? I think the little dummy's here." Well, what happened when she went in there? She took a pair of shoes, Dad's shoes. He came out of the bed and just put his elbows out, yeah, <laughs> like this, on the floor. He's laying on his stomach. 
So she he puts his elbows in the shoes. She takes a diaper and puts it around his fist. She puts a little shirt around his body. I'm scared of crap out of you. And uh, and put the diaper is like a is like a t-shirt, I guess, and a shirt. There's a little red checkered shirt. It's probably one of my little little shirts I used to have. And um and she puts a cap on it. Okay, so he's sitting there, and a bedspread comes all the way down and covers his arms. And so she she takes a lamp and comes in there, and we're following all four of us are following her. And man, that little dummy just turns around and looks at us. It's standing there, it's real, it's moved. Well, she said, You can't be loud or you're scared away. So lay down on the floor and just crawl up to it. Cause you're so much taller than them, it'll scare him away. You know, we was like five years old or six. And so we crawl up that thing and and he sort of looks at us and he moved his head around. But you know, I try to look at the cow bill. I didn't see eyes or nothing. That's why he's a little dummy. He don't he can't speak or see, but he knew. And he said, you can ask him questions, a few questions he can answer <laughs> yes or no. So we'd ask him a question, he'd say his head yes or no, you know. Oh my gosh. This was real. I mean, this little fellow lived there. And uh, we was all blown away. And then she finally, after about 15 minutes, she said, little dummy, are you getting tired? He's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she said, you want to go? He said, yes. <laughs> Well, you all have to leave the room. It's, it's very, he's tricky. He has to do things. He can't just walk out the front door. Whatever. I can't remember what it was. So we go back in the living room. She closed the door. And we were all excited to tell about everything. We forgot about Dad going to the outhouse. You know, right, right. Oh, my gosh. Ago. So he comes in the back door. We're like, oh, Dad, God, you wouldn't believe it, little dummy came. <laughs> he did. You know, and so we tell him all about it. He's all excited. Wow. You know. But but there were stories told. People would say, I was in the woods. I saw a little creature run. And Dad would make up stories. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, he had a story, I won't tell you, but it's, it's like run to spider that caught a cow. Um, there was, uh, I don't know, right, right there, I just can't, there's different stories they made up or they told when he was a kid. And a lot of them involved little people or little old men or the animated animated animals that actually dressed up and wear clothes. And I love that. And, and because, and the way they referred to them, they were sort of funny, silly, and jokesters. And uh, that's what Snarf was. Right, okay. So that's that's how Snarf came about. All right, yeah. wow. <laughs> it all, it all ties it, wow, that is awesome. I had to come up with something, a creature, and all the little characters, you know, there's not very many Dogs and cats creatures. There, you know, there was Giesel, the guy, I don't know what he was. Uh, <laughs> he had a guy that turned to a big rat, uh, but <laughs> rats are sort of neat when you animate them. And um, and there was other things in there that, that you didn't know what they were. They were just creatures. But um, um, and so, I've just been laying out some ideas from paintings of some creatures. There's one painting I want to do really, really bad, and it's like. This old road, it's been worn so much, it's just yeah. cut down in, okay? And then if you, and you're looking down the road, and it goes up and over a hill, and there's big, cut big, big trees on the side, and you see trees back over the hill. But on the road is a woman in long garments, and she's standing there right in the middle of the road, and there's these little creatures, <laughs> little critters, I call them, you know, they all stand about three foot, four foot high. And uh, they, they're a rough looking bunch. You don't know what, they're not animals, but they're just, and they, 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 they got hats and some little weapons they carry in pots and pe everything with them. They're on the move. There's like a bunch of them. And you're seeing, they're, they're going down the road, <laughs> going to go down the road. And there's like a line of them. And as a viewer, if you're looking at it, you're looking like over the head of the last one there, and you're seeing them. Well, this woman's down the road, she's turning them around. She's like, she's like, stop them. It's like pointing like she's serious. And they're turning, and they're going to, they can't go down the road, but they're bitching. You can see one's, <laughs> one's mad and one's yelling at her. And uh, 
I can just show all these uh, squawking and fussing. They got it. They've traveled a long way, and now they got to turn. They can't go down the road. She won't let them go, and they're all throwing a fit. But I want that. It's fantasy. It's like I want that time of day be in the evening, a warm evening, and they're on the road and dusty. And then here she is. Send them another way. And it's just so sounds like it sounds awesome. I, there's paintings like that I want to do. That's why I quit taking on contract work, and yeah, I'm. Right. And I've got to go more of a hermit style. I don't mind doing this every once in a while. Yeah. But if it's like you gotta, you know, help. So I it, need to paint, yeah. So if you weren't on earlier, Larry, Larry has offered five more prints for the St. Jude fundraiser. So, all right. So uh, we're definitely going to get this. This one is the one of the ones for the uh, There Be Dragons is the theme. So this is Dragon Slayers. I'm proud of it. Oh, uh, so uh, you we know. get some dragon. Yeah, I got a lot of dragons. Oh, paint. yeah. 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 And you <laughs> make dragons awesome. I mean, dragons are fantastic. But this is, I love, the, you got the adventuring party down here. You got a oh, nice this party party. here. Yeah. That's uh, Keith Parkinson. You know, that's just him. He posts for the guy holding the dragon <laughs> horn. Oh, that's Keith. Yeah, that was Keith. Oh, I, mean, oh, I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> These two girls, they're the same girl. This is when Keith and I had a studio in Lake Geneva. We were freelancing. We'd quit TSR. And this, to, to, this girl worked at the restaurant. We ate breakfast there. And uh, so we got her over to pose. So I used her twice, made her a blonde. But that was me, the color of my hair. Oh, now I'm a giant. You know, you're a big, a big, big fighter. Guy, yeah. Yeah. And then... Uh, oh. Uh, this one is sort of a made-up guy, just everything made up, uh, the face and stuff. And uh, I got this puny giant because a lot of people um, title Dragon Slayers and proud of it. And people say, well, why are they proud of killing a little dragon like that? Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, if you live in the country and been around animals a lot, I had a good friend. He knew the country pretty well. He stayed in the woods and played. And they found a squirrel running across a big field. This didn't have a tree for the squirrel to climb. So he starts running after the squirrel and he runs it down. The squirrel finally got tired. And uh, it was like a 15 or 20 acre field. And uh, so he caught the squirrel. He picked it up and the squirrel ate him alive, man. It chewed him <laughs> up. He was bleeding all over the place. <laughs> And so we called him squirrel for like the next six or eight months. <laughs> but what you get used to is even a small animal, when it's angry, it is dangerous. Okay. Now you get something the size of a cow, a big cow, let's say a dragon. Its bulk is the size of a big Brahma bull. Oh, he can claw and spit fire. You don't stand a chance unless you're magical. <laughs> or something, you don't really stand a chance in reality. And so this was very real. They caught this runt dragon, they found him, and he put up a good fight. It and took, they're yeah. all clawed up, dirtied up, and they finally got him. And they're proud of it. You know, they're like- Any oh, dragon's difficult. He yeah, was a indeed. mean <laughs> thing. And there's this little, he didn't have much treasure, but there's this little box of treasure there. <laughs> And I want to do it like that. You know how they take a picture at where they, somebody catches a big marlin. They, yeah. You know, they uh, I, I wanted that feel. Like they caught him and like somebody was taking a picture of him. You know? That dragon gets oh, bigger uh, every year. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I've been out there in and, and the woods and, and, and you, you, you come across, you corner a raccoon, man, you you got trouble. Uh, they can carry you up in a minute. So you want you, you, talking about trouble for here? Let me. Uh, I don't want to open too many and crash the stream here. Uh, talking about trouble. This one. <laughs> oh, that one. Split up. <laughs> That's an idea I had for a long time, for a long time, and uh, and finally I got the time to start doing sketches on it, and um, and I wanted this again. This is when I do a painting, I get the idea first of all. I got the idea. I was all inspired, and I, once I start getting on the paper, as it starts developing, lots of times the story starts to develop in my mind. And as I started getting this down, when I had the drawing all done, I wanted it to be a night scene, but uh, you got to be able to see too. Yeah. You know? And so I thought snow would help reflect light and stuff. Yeah. And um, and my my thing was these are two brothers. 
and they've been off on an adventure or in a you know as a soldier or something. And the one on the right that we're looking at. Um, he's an older one, and he he looks a little older, and his clothing, if you can see the print, his clothing and stuff is a little bit better than the guy on the left. I'd say the mm -hmm. one on the left it could be uh, his younger brother, but not much younger, and his clothes a little bit rougher. He's, he'd be like a regular soldier, and his brother could be a lieutenant or something, if you're going to compare it that way, or a captain. But they're returning home after wars or after adventure or whatever and they're riding across this field and um, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not but uh, okay yeah up here in this if you see the tracks in the snow mm -hmm. yeah, you'll see that they didn't start running until right about here yeah, right, right under the dragon mm -hmm. shadow and then the, 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 the tracks start to blur and kicked up in my mind, they were riding along, talking. He's like, what? <laughs> heading, heading home. And just a casual ride. And then this thing comes down, and it was coming in behind them. And it just They saw it just about five, eight seconds ago. And they just kicked their horses and started, started running away. And I thought, when I was paying it, I thought, they don't, they don't stand a chance, really. So what what could we do to give them some hope? And I was thinking, what would I do if I was there, if I'm the older brother? What would I do? And I thought, the only thing you could do is split up. He might get one of us, mm -hmm. but he might not get us both. And so, and there's even hope that maybe one split up the dragon hit the other one, got down, and then the other guy rode back around and fought it. And both of them could have fought it. It's so, so no, that's it's awesome to hear the the, 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 nice. the thought behind these. That's yeah, really fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Here, good reason to split the party. All right, yeah. I'm gonna, one more question from the audience here, that, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll start winding down because we don't want to hold you too long here, Larry. We're having a wonderful time, but uh, hey, I don't even know what time it is. It's my well, wife, <laughs> yeah. It's my it's wife not, first sent me tomorrow. Said, I guess you want to just talk to yourself to death. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm, just I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, yeah, 902 your time. Please ask Larry if his no, novel Runes of Autumn takes inspiration from anything special. It says, yeah. I always wonder if there was more to Stridgenfell. Yeah, it was a, uh, there's a book. There's a book I wrote. I mean, I, I wrote the story and my cousin, he's a pretty good writer and he wrote it. I'm not that good of a writer. I'm a storyteller. And uh, so, um, I don't know if you read the book. It's a pretty good book. It got a pretty good rating. Um, but it was just, it's just a story that over the years that came up uh, in my mind, when I go to bed, I would continue the story. And pretty soon it worked out to be a whole friggin' story. I thought, I need to write a book on this. And so when I did, I was going to do the cover for it. I was going to publish it. Then, um, I just picked a scene of two of the major characters. And that is the guy standing on the bank is, is the uncle and the girl in the water look at, picking this gem, finding it stuck on a tree. That's, that's his that's the uncle and, and niece. And uh, there are two major characters in the story. I know. It's a good story. Very cool. This, painting, this yep. painting you're holding up right now. Yeah, I love this one too. <laughs> through the what deeps. is this? I did a series of paintings and I was going to do six. And I think I only got five done, four or five. They were all big paintings. I did them for myself. And, and each one has got a story, a really good story behind them, a short story. And uh, I was wanting to write the stories, but I got so, I did the paintings. I didn't want to write the stories, but they got so friggin' busy more and more and more and more that I just finally gave up. I'll never get a chance to write them. But if I if I can get a few, like I said, I've got to I've got to be more of a hermit, right? And, uh, yeah. I've got because I've got only so many years left. I turn seventy four this summer, and I hope I'm like mom and dad. But who knows? But this one, um, this story is. Um, 
So what was the name of this? This one is uh, Through the Deeps, and it says Places of yeah. Power series, print five yeah, of seven. Yep. I got to take a while to remember the story. There is a magical place. Now it's coming to me now. <laughs> uh, that this, the, the girl in front, the girl in the white or whitish colored long dress, she's, she is a young wizard and she studied and everything um, doing right. But she's, there is a place she's heard about, a very powerful place. And if you go there and you can, you can survive it, it's a test. It's not a physical test, but it's a mental test. And if you can survive it, you can also maybe see your own future and, and everything. And if, if um, and it's in, in it, this place, I didn't paint it, but it's a big black stone laid on the ground, long sort of rough hewn stone. You may have these small stones in front of it, right? It looks like there's a marking on the on this stone yeah. right here. Yeah, these lead to it. She right. finally got to the point where she can go on her own. This one back here is a guide. There is a village. This is a huge, huge forest area. Most people don't go in it, but there's some locals that lives on the edge of it that live off the forest, so they hunt and everything. And certain ones in this family line, like this girl here, her mother and her grandmother and her grandmother had been chosen or had the gift they know where this place is at and they can lead people to it but they also know what the place is they have more of a better understanding which if i wrote the story you'd understand but this so they can guide you there and um so that woman is a guide and, and there's dangers in this big, big forest and everything. So, so they guide you there. And once they leave you about here and basically in the story, she goes on down over a hill and then around the curve into a clearing and there's a stone. So she can't really see the girl on the horse. Can't really see the girl, you know, she goes out of sight. So this girl, I would say the woman on the horse, she's going to get off her horse tied up and probably rest here under a tree. For the rest of the day to see if this girl comes back okay and 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 she has to lead her back home back to the village and when you take this test um you lay down on this stone and you've got i can't remember everything but you got to sort of cleanse your mind your brain and then you get a vision and it's like almost like a tree or a river and it's your life that goes off on different paths. And these are all the possibilities you could go. And some are short branches and some are longer branches. And you, you're drawn through this almost, you know, you, 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 your, your soul leaves your body just about and goes through these paths. And you can get glimpses of futures. And, um, and, and this particular girl, she saw the future as being a great help to people. A war will be coming in, but she can end up being a great, great help. And she's got to choose that path, a good path to do good. And if you're a very evil person, this, you can actually die taking this test. You just die there. So it's, it's a good story. And each one of those has got really good stories. There's a, one of the girl playing a violin and she's floating on the stone. And there's, that's, I can't already tell that story because every time I tell it, I usually end up crying and, and the person I'm telling it to, if they were very sensitive, they end up crying too. So, <laughs> But I'd like to write these sometimes. It's so wonderful to note that there's such detail behind a lot of these. And, and there are so many of these that we can go on. So... I'll just have to say, down the road, sometime, summer, winter, coming up, we'll have to have you back to tell one of these stories, because these are unbelievable. I mean, just... You have to remember which ones we did, so you don't... Do oh, don't worry. I, I, uh, I, I, I don't remember. I have the folder. I'll keep the... I have every every adventure uh, log and every uh, show, all the folders in, so we know. I've gone through most of the ones I have in here already, which is really, really cool. But, um, 
So, uh, Anna, Mike, any anything you would like to um, say? I'm just, it's it's so cool. I, I had a, like a four or five questions that I, I was going to, to ask, but now we, that will be for a future, hopefully yeah. a future show. So We've gone week. almost two and a half hours yeah. since we started yeah, early. So, too. The stories are so wonderful. We, we, so, well, yep. we want to respect you okay, and not so keep it too long. You guys have never, well, I'm going to probably stay here for another hour and draw. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, you guys have not really, Truly met me much until now, right? Yep. Got to say, I, well, I'm sure I've sat through. Gen Con 2019. Yeah, we, we, we chatted that's, for like uh, half an hour together with some other people yeah. at the booth. That that's yeah. about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Am I sort of like who you thought I would be? Uh, yeah, but more, more adventurous. More event. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The adventurous yep. part of the of your early life is really, really, uh, really cool. Yep. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yep. And 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 uh, just. Uh, you know, your style when I was younger, the vibrancy of the colors really stuck mm -hmm. out for me. You know, it just, yep. uh, yeah, it was just really. I didn't really, I didn't know color very well. Keith, I tried to pick Keith's brain on color. You know, he, I tried to help him with anatomy and stuff. But yes, because of Keith's painting, I realized, okay, remember a painting Keith did called What Do You Mean We're Lost? Mm -hmm. It's draconian. It's going through the snow, and there's one a, like he would have been a gold dragon. Go, and he's sort of you can tell he's a leader, and he's got his hands thrown up, like, um, and we couldn't think of, think of a title for it. He got all of his artists around looking at paint. He said, "I got a title at something," and I said, "I don't know." I said, "What's that guy saying?" The, the, the leader, and Keith looked at me. So to me, he's saying, "What do you mean we're lost?" I said, "There's your title, man." That painting, the color isn't so good. I really looked at that painting, stared at it a lot. It looked like it was a real color for a real snowy day. I've been there, almost exact scenes in real places in my life. So what makes his look so good and mine's more cartoony? And, uh, and then uh, when Keith and I shared a studio, I really started picking his brain. But even while he's working in the studio, I wouldn't have him to come over and... and uh, I was having trouble with mid-ground colors. I, I was in the habit, like, everything's a color. I, I knew we are out a box of crayon of eight crayons. Okay. He had a box of a thousand crayons. <laughs> and he could name the colors. Mine, there's a blue and a red and a yellow and a white and a black and a purple and a brown. You know, his was a million with no names. Just some color. I said, how do you, where's this coming from? And he couldn't, it was a talent. And he tried to explain it to me, and he couldn't explain it. Because he'd finally go, I don't know, I just see it. And I thought, I've got to open my eyes up to color. I was, all my life was, drawing was my strong suit. And I was always doing shapes. I was more interested in the shape, the shape, the shape, drawing it to look real. Then we start painting it. I painted it. Trees are green. Grass green. <laughs> the sky's blue. <laughs> And I was had to learn a lot. And I knew by the time when Keith started working there, my colors was not good enough. And when he came and he blew me away with color, he was weak in drawing skills, but he was strong in color. That we picked each other's brain for a couple of years. And um, I would have him to come over and say, All right, I don't know what color to put this mid ground in. And he would start mixing up a color. And he'd mix up, I started calling them Keith Parkson's shit colors, is what I call it. There was no name. <laughs> they were grayish, brownish, pinkish, or orangish shit colors. No name for it. There's, and I'm like, that's what I'm missing. I'm not seeing these colors. And then I started to learn how to see all over again. When I give a class or teach about this, I'll learn how to see. First of all, learn how to see the shape of something. How is it really made? Learn to understand how something is made. If you know how it's made, you can sculpt it and you can draw it because you know how it's made. Now it comes to the color part. Well, look at the real colors. Don't assume skies are blue. You know, we're trained all our life. We coloring book, you got your little coloring. Okay, grass is green. Trees either got a gray, you use your black or a gray or a brown trunk. And we're trained on a, a limited palette. Look around in real life, there's most of it's muted. It's like to give a good example, that's what I'd say. You're driving on the interstate. Let's say you're in, in different terrain and, and, and you're looking at all the 
green trees. It could even be in the autumn, but just seeing the color. But mainly, you know, the other season besides autumn, because some places you can see really bright colors. But you driving down there, you're looking at it, and, and you spot a sign. You can spot a sign a half a mile away or farther. Very clear. Why is it? Because when humans use color, we use straight color. Mm -hmm. The sign, if it's got red <coughs> letters and blue letters, you can see it from half a mile away. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So then I got to thinking like, okay, well, when does nature show off as pure colors? Okay. The closest you can get into just nature nature is a sunset. The next thing is flowers. The next thing is certain animals and reptiles and butterflies. Nature just shows this intense color, pure colors, very selfishly. They just give you little bits here and there. And you've got to look around and see these colors. You think trees are green, but they're not that green. They are muted. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not emerald green. <laughs> so in other words, it's the, you've got to learn to see that. And I've done that so much when my kids were little. I'll be driving along and I'd say, look at that hillside over there. It'd be, you know, we in Wisconsin, so it'd be hill with trees and stuff. And it'd be maybe six o'clock in the evening in summertime. And I'd say, what color would you paint those trees? Well, they wouldn't know. So I'd start mixing the color in my mind. I said, well, you get some, get some um, green and then use a little bit of umber, just, you know, and then a little bit of purple. And I'd start seeing that color and mixing it like, you're like, there's not those colors in those trees. They're green, but they're not green. They was far from green. In the distance, in the haze. And I, I, I learned to see. And I start trying to mix these colors and mix them. And sometimes you know what the color is supposed to be, but you can't find it <laughs> on the palette. But if you stay with it enough, you'll, you'll work it out. But it's learning how to see. So not just the shape of things, but the color of things. So, the audience is, uh, you've gotten begin comments oh, on well, that. Just gotcha. so you're aware, the audience has been really going crazy. We have 136 people watching right now, just so you're aware. We're at the tension. And um, um, they've all, they all want me to ask. I do have a special, uh, if you're ever interested, I have a game where I DM Fred Greenwood. So, yeah. if you ever want to jump in and play and bring El Rod the Red out for one session, you're more than welcome <laughs> to join in. So, just I would like to get the campaign, but I can't. I yeah. can't. But that's, uh, with your life, if something you really like to do, you yeah. have to sacrifice some other things yep. you like. To. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if you ever want to jump in, we have we have we have a one slot special guest. We had Luke Gygax on this last Saturday as a special Are guest they? in it. So yeah, it's with, been so long I played somebody have to almost play for me. I that's okay. If, if you ever want to, and you get the urge, well, just it's open. Well, I, if I'll let you know. Okay. I need to get your information uh, and and convert it into. A, I need to put you in a file. Of, uh, this one, uh, tell me if you want it via the text or the email I've been sending. I send it either way. So whatever whatever's better for you, whichever. Email. 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 I'll, I'll re email it. I sent one this morning. So yeah. I go to. I go to. Okay. Uh, like I got you. Messenger email. or just. It only gives I know, the name. It's all over the place. Yeah. I don't know. Right, I'll send you all the via email. Okay. So. Anything in closing, uh, Larry? Wow. Yep. What Thank an you. unbelievable discussion. And we started early. We started at like uh, yeah. 7.40 Eastern. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. <laughs> so we've been going for like two over two and a half hours. This is fantastic. Okay, everybody that's listening got to donate something to St. Jude, right? Yeah, yes. Well, they will. Mm -hmm. when we, <laughs> yeah, when they that will. fundraiser, we're going to smash the $10,000 that we raised last year. And yep. like I said, we'll have seven. I have two here. And Larry's given us five more. So there'll be seven complimentary giveaways. You know, it goes from high to low. We have all these other, other stuff coming. We'll talk about that in a pre-show coming up before the fundraiser. Razor, but that'll be fantastic. Like, I guarantee you that we're yep. going to raise a lot of money this year. Well, I hope so. It's yeah, a good absolutely. Charity. Good charity. Uh, yeah. And I would, I would also uh, look for probably some orders coming from people. You're like, oh my god, I got five, yeah. six orders from last well, night. So here's what we just posted. I'm, I'm taking a lot of the, from the from the basic rules book and stuff. You know, the the red box cover. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thing. And there's some good wash drawings in there. In some of those books, they was they were ink wash drawings, which is very difficult to do. And I always liked some of those, and they were pretty popular. And so I just about a month ago, I just 
I could scan them. Got a pretty good scan of them. And, um, and I blew them up, cleaned them up best I could. And I put them like four or five pictures on one print. One of my favorite from that that yeah. era is that one. Uh, I, that's one of mine. Now, I don't have that one yet, but I will probably do it. Yep. So, that one is, I is like fantastic. That, one. that that's such a good landscape sketch too. So it's it's fantastic. I love landscapes. Yep. But um, but I put these out as prints, and my wife said, "People are not." Gonna, I hadn't put them out. I hadn't made the prints made. Right. And I was shorter. And I said, "I can do these 13 by 19, 17 by 22. I'm just gonna run high res." And I said, "I think they're neat." It's called. And I said, "I'm gonna call this a memory series for people that gamed, you know, and some of the early stuff." And so. He said, no, you won't sell them. And then the guy runs my website. Up. It was like two nights ago. Um, I said, I'm going to send these to you and put them up on the website. They're ready to go. I said, I think we'll sell a few. I think it's going to bring back some memories. He did. And he called me up and told me, I got them on there. They're up. He said, you just sold one. And then we talked to him. He said, you've sold another one. I think well, during our conversation, we sold like 12 of them that quick. And uh, for old gamers, it's certainly you can have some of those favorite pictures. And I've got maybe enough to do one more uh, print with several pictures on it. So they're pretty neat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of old gamers. I was fortunate when when I was working at TSR, I was a little bit older than, than the gamers. Yeah. And so now they've grown up. And and uh, all us. I got, I got to go along with you. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've been playing my campaign for 42, 42 years since I was 12 years old, you know? So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. And What's that's, been fun? yeah, and, and, and let me tell you something. A lot of people are saying when they're, they feel like they're 12 again in, in chat and all, and it's, it's, it's great reminiscing. And wow, the stories tonight, Larry, have been so fantastically incredible hearing some backgrounds. <laughs> and to note that it's you and Keith Parkinson in that picture and that one yeah. drawing. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah. I didn't know that. So. Oh, just amazing, yeah, amazing the things. The one I was saying about me sitting on a stool with a, I, I can't think of the name of it, it's on my website. It's very warm, it's indoor, so just a couple of lamps lighting the whole thing. That's Keith in there too. Oh. Two hooded guys, one's got his back to you, that was Keith. And then the one you can see, he's got a hood, he's got, you can see just this part of his face, and that was Keith, that looks just like him. Oh, I know which one, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. So we're going to, Anna and Mike, we're going to forego shout outs. It's so late. Tonight, oh, yeah, everybody. yeah. We don't, we yeah, don't, we don't need to. Yeah, yeah. I'll yes. do mine on Friday. So, so yeah, because we, uh, yeah, yeah. we have a fancy amount. I, I got, this is the first of five streams in five days, everyone. So I got, I'm going Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be a long Mine's week. Really? All right. So yeah. let's, we're going to do, we're going to do the, quick, the giveaways. Last call. All right. So this is what you're going to do. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to do Crystal Bull Freya and, and uh, a, um, uh, where is it here? Uh, a Book of Taverns one. And two county uh, country sites and Siege of Durgham's Folly. I love all those adventures. All right. We'll do those uh, tonight. And then, uh, you know, we got uh, Gamescape 3D tomorrow night on, during our game. Fancy Mapping Show Friday. Saturday in the morning special with all the crafters Saturday. And then Gab and Sunday. So, uh, yeah, wow. I'm going to be on vacation <laughs> after this week. Yeah, I got it. Yep. This week's cool. yep. My wife's going to kill me. But yeah, you know the feeling, Larry, right? You know, you yeah. always gotta work. You know? I've been I, killed several plus times. A, plus a real job here. All right, so here we go. We're gonna close yeah. this out. We're gonna close out these giveaways right now. See who wins them, and then uh, uh, we'll call it an evening. We're gonna raid Cave Geek Art tonight. We're gonna raid. Into, oh, uh, awesome! Yeah. And uh, very appropriate. Yeah. Have the artist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the reason yeah. we're gonna do that is I kind of feel bad. I'll tell you off, off camera and uh, uh, something. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but it just was kind of funny. So uh, let me let me close these out real quick here. Here we go. Here we go. Wow, look at all these. Wow. This is like one of the – a lot of people. Entries are closed. The first winner, Orion Noir. Grats. There you go. Oh, all wow. right, grats. You asked a lot of questions tonight. So that was yep. great. Mm -hmm. Next winner, Justinius won. Okay, I know uh, – I think I had to address this for both of you. So grats, everyone. Orion, which one do you want? Orion, you want Durgams? Um, if I was you, well, or the other taverns one, you tell me, Orion, which one of these you get, and Justinius gets the other ones. If you want that one, let me know. If you want Durgams and the country sites, let me know, okay? And then I'll give send Justinius the other one. Thanks all. Sit tight here. Let's raid into Cave Geek Art. Please say hi to him. He does wonderful work. Ooh. He's going to Gavicon yep. as well, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think and, so. yep. and he's yeah, going to do he he's going to do a custom Greyhawk build for it. So he's working what? on that. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's what it's kind of funny, but I got to okay. tell you that story. Larry, thank you. And we'll have you back, yeah, definitely. You, we'll definitely yeah, have you, you back. So this much. was so wonderful. You've yeah, been yeah. so gracious in, 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 tonight. And and I hope to uh, hope keep the relationship going. And yeah. thank you for the donation for the St. Jude fundraiser. I yeah. promise they will go, all the good people who are deserving. And we're going to raise a lot of money this year. Uh, we're sure. going to we're gonna crush it. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm going to hit the wrong button that I always do here. <laughs> all right. Have a great night, everyone. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, let me set the raid up real quick. Raid, raid, raid. Yeah, we all need new shout outs tonight, right, Anna? Yep. We'll get yeah, done we do right. With all, yeah, all, all the shows yeah. I got running this week, it's, yep. uh, it's nuts here. I mean, I'm really yep. just speechless at this. Yeah, yeah, this is so awesome. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yep. So many awesome stuff. I bet you I bet this raid's going to be over 100 people. We, uh, Larry, we went off, we had 131 still on. Past yep. 100. 101. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you tomorrow night. Bye. Bye-bye. we're still talking here if you want, so. Yeah. Um, Have a great night, and uh, thank you for everything. We're off camera.